Good afternoon. I am Dom. I am Jamie. And welcome back to the cutting room floor. We've had a little complications, but we're ready for you. So, in honor of May the 4th, we're going to talk about <laughs> Planet of the Apes. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, but, it has everything to do with May the 4th. And in a, in a weird way. Kind weird of way. Does. I mean, you know, Luke was watching that when he was making the wars. But. We're talking about Planet of the Apes, 1968, the original, the one that sparked it all. The one that I had never seen. Wow. And I wanted never? to see. Never. I know. Never. Look, that's why. I've seen parts, you know, but. Well, Heston's ass. That's the one part you saw. I did see his ass. Yeah. It was, hey. If, <laughs> 40 something. Yeah. 50 he, something. Whatever. If, if they would have crucified him, he would have had hot cross buns. <laughs> He this definitely he would have had. had some hot <laughs> cross buns. <laughs> he could have been a Christ-like guy. I, I guess honestly, he was kind of Christ-like a little bit, in well, a small way. In oh, in Planet of the Apes, yeah, not yes, real yes, fucking life. Yeah, well, when I was thinking, of, <laughs> I was thinking he played Moses in Ten Commandments. I'm like, oh yeah, sort he of. Did, I guess he was so. a prophet. Uh, if you look at it that way, he made a prophet for season. He Steve definitely Hill. made a prophet, you know, and for Fox Studio for sure. <laughs> Okay, so Planet of the Apes, 1968, has an 88 on Rotten Tomatoes. And really? Is that it? That's it. I thought it'd be in the 90s. Yeah. But the other streets love it. An 8 on IMDb, which is very good, and a 4 on Letterboxd, which is also very good. Yeah, you know, big scores. Franklin J. Schaffner, a director I'd never heard of. Yeah, bro. Only but thing, he directed Pat. Yep. But I, I was mean, like, he directed Patton's a lot of a, other stuff. You know I'm a George C. Scott man, so... Yeah. I like Patton. Um, that's the only other thing I think I saw when I was looking at him. I think it's the yeah. only other thing. So that's why I was like, I don't so, think it's his peak season. So we, we have a, a Cora as a guest here. Cora, do you know where Franklin J. Schaffner went to college? Franklin and Marshall. Really? Right up yeah. the road. Right they, up the road. They, they have, uh, they have a, a, a whole thing of like stuff that his family donated. So they have a special section, it's including... No, 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 not not a wing, but in the one library they have like uh, yeah, a section. Yeah, yeah, a section <laughs> that you can go in and see like scripts for Planet of the Apes, That's production right. art, and everything. It's incredible, it's and for Patton, like his different films, yeah, yeah. because it's his. Uh, he's an alumnus from there, so his oh he and his family like. Donated all this. It's incredible. I have to go see it. Yeah, we definitely got to take a field trip. Because they have apparently like one of Rod Serling's original scripts from like 63, 64. Damn. So. Yeah, yeah. We got to take a trip there. Field yeah. trip. So. It's not even written by day. Michael Wilson and Rod Serling. Mm-hmm. Directed by Franklin J. Schaffner. Mm-hmm. Came out in 68. In March of 68. Yeah. And, and I think that's important for... Something I'm going to point out later once we're talking about it. All right. I know it sounds okay. crazy. It does sound crazy. It, so. it does. Right now it sounds crazy, but it'll make sense once I say it. So why don't you tell us what it's about? That's about two hours. <laughs> and it is about two it hours. About two hours. 153. Yeah. Okay, so Planet of the Apes is based on a book written by Pierre. I always pronounce it Bolle, but it's probably just Bol, B O U L L E. He's French. It might be Bolle or Boule or something like that. He wrote another book that was made into another film in the 50s. And what book and He film wrote is that? Bridge on the River Kwai. So the directed same- by one of the ghosts, <laughs> <laughs> David Lean. The Lean man. Yes. One of the best directors of all time without a question. Yeah, and you know, I actually read when they were Trying to make Dune like before Hodorowski in the 70s. I think Herbert wrote a script for it and some other people did. They wanted David Lean to direct an well, adaptation of Dune. He could have did it. Look at look at fucking Lawrence of Arabia. I know. Like, that's he, what I mean. Definitely could have been perfect. Would have been lit, actually. Because I know you're a big Lean fan. I'm a big Lean fan, yeah. huge Lean fan. Everything I've seen from him is. You're. I even like great expectations, dude. Your fanaticism for David Lean is bigger than David Lean's ears. It is. Because he had huge ears. Like, I even like <laughs> Oliver Twist, bro. Wow. Like, yeah. You like your Oliver with a twist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the film, I never read it, though. So, yeah, I heard well, the book's not where it's at. Well, you know, Dickens was a. I was going to say, he's a very stylistic writer. Yeah, I was going to say. Like him to like it. Yeah. There's a good <laughs> episode of Doctor Who. In the first season from 2005, where they have they interact with Dickens, and I 
It might make you understand him as an author more, but it might not make you appreciate his work. <laughs> <anymore. laughs> you know, you know what yeah. I mean. Like he was good with like ghost stories. Mm-hmm. Look at the most famous ghost story of all time: mm-hmm. A Christmas Carol. A Christmas Carol. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's classic. It is, but it's a ghost story. It is. It's, so it's kind of a horror because the ghost of Christmas future is terrifies me. Yeah, I mean, oh. seeing like your ex partner's face on your knocker—that's <laughs> weird. My knockers. What? Why do they look like Jacob Marley? <laughs> he, he had them pierced. That's why it sounded like chains. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Scrooge was ahead of his time. <laughs> he was ahead of his time. So anyway, Planet of the Apes yeah. is about a space mission. And we don't really know we the We don't mission, know what it is at all. <laughs> except later on, he's like, you know... You know, uh, what's her name? Stuart, uh, yeah. the female who ends he's like, up. She would die a year ago. Yeah. So she ends up dying. And later on, he says, like, she was supposed to be the new Eve. So mm-hmm. it's like they knew that they were going into space yeah. and going somewhere. Yeah. And probably going to Sounds have like to. they were trying to Elon Musk up. Like, yeah. Just trying to start fresh somewhere else. But there's three dudes and one woman. Yeah. Dude, you, need all, least... you, need, you need more women than yeah. men, truthfully. Because I, I know the Bible is based on incest, but like. If you think about Noah, it was just Noah and his family, and then they repopulated the world. Dude, you got to do it wow, like the Ark, terrible. like get two chicks of each race. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? you yeah. Know? You get a thin one, a thick one of each race. <laughs> I'm not even back then. Back then, believe it or not, if you if you've ever taken art history, because I know you've been, to I've taken it twice. Yeah, <laughs> so it's so nice you took it twice. Yeah, it's so you know that ancient art. You know those. The 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 thicker the woman, the more they knew they were going to survive. Ch- yeah, she yeah. children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All yeah. all the popular chicks were hippie back then. Yeah, that's what yes, they, were. they were. Yeah, the popular <laughs> chicks. So I like Marilyn, bro. Them hips. Yeah, they yeah. Why? So so they go into space and they're in space for eighteen months, but because of traveling at light speed, they traveled two thousand and seven years. Yeah, and. They crash land. Well, they land. They land because in water. Because when they land, <laughs> Landon, when they land, Landon, who, who's the one astronaut, he's like, we weren't programmed to land in water. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of clues there if is. you watch the film as to like the end. There are a shit ton of clues. There, I, and, and, and it's I, crazy. It all comes to you when you see the end. Yeah, he's like, it we just all rushes to you. Because like you said, it's sprinkled yes. from start to finish. Yeah, <laughs> but, but you don't realize it because you're going on this journey with... You just rhyme with, with, with Taylor. Hesson, yeah. Yeah, because Charlton Heston is uh, the colonel. He's like the grizzled, uh, angry, bitter, like, uh, military man. Yeah. Uh Landon just graduated from, uh, he was like top of his class or whatever, because Taylor makes fun of him later on. Mm-hmm. He's he's like, you know, I'm getting misty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm re- I'm prepared to die. He was kind of, <laughs> hey, he was kind of Taylor misty. was kind of a dick at first, bro. <laughs> he, he was, because I think he's seen so much, the movie's a comment on society at the time, yes. so he's seen so much shittiness that he hates humanity mm-hmm. and and then dodge uh the brown dude yeah is the science guy and he's like i think he relied more on him than he did on landing because yeah because he needs cause, like him. dodge test the soil see yep. what the hell we can do here and he's like oh, carbohydrates and yeah he, he was you know douglas i hate to say it. yeah he, he, he's, <laughs> he, he's a science nerd guy he was a nerdy dude who, who, who they you need, need to survive though, like, they need, need him to survive mm-hmm. and and it's it's crazy. So they land on this planet, and they land in water. So they get out on a raft, and they go to where it's desert, and start looking for water. <laughs> they don't decide. Yeah, it, it definitely wasn't drinkable. The water. No, like, no, yeah. no. But, but still, it's like, how did they know? Funny. It's like we have we got water. Whoa, is there water though? Yeah, and yeah. I was like, we need signs like, of life. Water is signs of life. They're like, is this place inhabitable? And I'm yeah. like, clearly, clearly it water. fucking is. <laughs> I was like, clearly it is. That's yeah. one thing I did laugh at. Yeah, but the way water. that scene is shot, incredible, incredible, dude. Yeah. Like the cinematography and camera work there was just nuts. I was blown away. The way they did the 360 over the ship as it's oh, going yeah. into the water, I was like, "Oh yeah, this is way ahead of its time." Yeah, I'm like, this is way ahead because they of had time. to build the whole like at least the nose of the ship. Yeah, so and I'm like, this that. shit is practical because they had to climb out of it too. And yeah, right. Uh, it was. It was that's what, yeah, that's what I was great. like, dude. This is 
This is pure filmmaking. That's yeah, one, that's yeah. one thing I loved about it. Yeah, because there's not many special effects other than makeup. The makeup and and the makeup is a one. Yeah, a one. Like it don't yeah. look like 2001 monkeys. No, like yeah. where the dude looks all freaky and his eyes. <laughs> <are> all <freaky laughs> you, you mean the Tim Burton version? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, fucking 2001. Oh, Space oh, Odyssey. oh, okay, okay. Like, at the beginning, yeah, you see the apes they look terrible. Like, yeah, yeah. Like but Kubrick. they came out the same year. Did they? Because then 2001, 62. No, 2001 is like 68. Is it? Yeah. yeah you might be right. Because 64 was Dr. Strangelove. So there's no way right, he did right, 2001 right. before that. So they came I out mean, the same look, goddamn year. He used all the money on everything else. He's like, yeah. I got time for monkeys. Oh, They're only going to be our, in here for a few minutes. It's our complaint. Like uh, Warner Brothers using all their special effects money for Dune for instead Dune, of the Flash. Instead of the Flash yeah. and Morbius. And, yeah. Not Morbius. Um, not, Morbius. Um, not Morbius. The Flash. What was the other Warner one? Oh. They didn't. Oh, they gave Barbie, Barbie. money. Yo, it was Barbie, Barbie and Dune. Dune. Yeah, we were like, and, and they're like, screw they're the like, Flash, fuck man. the Flash, and yeah. fuck everything else. Yeah. Oh, and Aquaman. Aquaman. Probably. Yeah, they were like, yeah. fuck Aquaman. Look, look, you you had a drumming octopus in the first <laughs> one. You wasted our time with that. They were like, Denis, here's the money. Yeah. Greta, here's the money. Yeah. They were like, thank you. They're like, Denis, you need. Ten million dollars to make a grain of sand look, look real. Look real, yeah. He's <laughs> like, listen, this little CGI monkey thing. Yeah. Five million for that, no problem. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but so- oh yeah, yeah, they incredible everything in it, and even like the sets, because how primitive. So so they they wander this wasteland and they find plant life. They do, and then they find a waterfall. Yep, and they jump in. They, yeah, yeah, they're like uh, wait, something turns into magic mic. Yo, I was literally like, they all. <laughs> I was like, so it, there's a total shift when they find yeah. the waterfall. Yeah, yeah, because they get so happy and just get naked yeah. and take a dip together. Yeah, like three bros just love to do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and then and then suddenly the one Landon sees like. Like the footprints, so they all get out of the water. They're You're just like, standing there, like like bumping dork. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh like what the hell? It was a bunch of door stoppers were flinging, <laughs> and, they, and they fucking they were like, uh, "Oh, someone's stealing our clothes." Yeah, what's happening? And and it's crazy because like they, uh, I like how when before they show anyone on this planet that they land on, you see like a little bit of arms first, but you don't see the body. Yeah, you don't see the body. Yeah. And and so then because they see the weird scarecrows. Too, yes, yes. But they're not like they're ape like. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, so, they are and they're in the in like a cross. Yes. Like, they're like a like, cross X almost. Yeah. Oh yeah, a cross. You're right. Yeah. It is an X. Thank you. Mm-hmm. They're like a cross. That would be a T you idiot. Texas cross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exhibit. I mean? Exhibit. Yep. X yeah. to the Z. Come on. So but it's interesting because I think that's how they actually used to crucify people. I've seen it on like Conan covers, it, that like terrible. you know what I mean. And <laughs> just and, and oh, yeah, Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not yeah, O'Brien. yeah, yeah. That's how they used they, to crucify they, Conan O'Brien. They probably stretch him out really far too. Oh. There's a really great X Men cover. I think it's 251 that Mark Silvestri drew back in like 88 or 89. Yeah, they oh, crucified Wolverine on an X. It's incredible. Oh, that's crazy. It's it's, it's probably the best. X Men cover ever. That's lit. If you look That's it up, scary. it's X Men two fifty one, because it's my favorite cover. So, so yeah, you're right. They see the scarecrows, and 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 that's when Taylor fi- sees the trees. He's like, "Screw the scarecrows!" Yeah, and he starts running. Yep. And then like, they find the waterfall. Things. Start uh, d- doing a blue lagoon thing. Yeah. <laughs> and and you're right. They steal their clothes, so they start to follow the people that steal their clothes. And then they just get dressed with whatever pieces they find because yeah. they're ripping them apart. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fucking lit. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, that's I told lit. you. That's sick. And and so then they see the people and they're like, These "Wait, people. they're not going to hurt us." Yeah, they're like, "Because they look stupid." <laughs> what does Dodge say? He's like, "Bro, look if if we can freaking." If these people, if this is the best they got, yeah. we'll take this bitch over in six months. That, that, that was Taylor. What did Dodge say? What did Dodge say? God bless the vegetarians. Yo, yes, he did say that. <laughs> yeah, because they, yo, because yeah, they're, they're, they're eating fruit. fruit. Yeah, they, they're eating like, fruit out the trees. Believe it or not, that's in the book of Genesis. Eat of the fruit of the trees. They, hey, and, that's and that's what, what the people doing. are doing. Yep. And he's like, God bless and the vegetarians. They're in there just. Yeah, because they're, they're eating all disgusting. Because they're eating it too. They're just sitting standing there sure, watching. I would them. too. I'd be like, what else are we going to eat in this bitch? And then I think. The genius of this film is the reveals, because then you hear the music. Jerry Goldsmith doing the goddamn music, man. The music is so incredible, because 
there's this shift. They hear a noise, the people, mm-hmm. and they're like. The manhunt scene. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and you see these, like, six whacking away at the corn to get through. And you're like, what the hell's coming? And and the three guys are looking like, what the, what is this? And then, oh, it's incredible. What happens? I see your face. No one oh, else can, but I can. Dude. So that, I thought that was one of the best parts of the film was and, the start of the manhunt. And, and look, okay, so like right up until the manhunt, that's like the first act of the film. It's like the first half hour. Yeah. And it's not much that happens, but you know yeah. it's building. You oh, yeah. The, you feel the bricks around you. Oh, God, it's incredible, though. The way – you're right. The cinematography, the – that's what really adds to it, and the, dude, I'm like, it's yeah, the craftsmanship of the film plus all the other good shit. It's a dude, yeah. It yeah. makes me want to see more Franklin J. Schaffner. Films. Right, I'm like, dude, yeah. man, maybe like he I might be an unsung he hero. Might, he might be. He he did win an Oscar for Patton. Though. Look, he did Patton and Planet of the Apes, two like probably radically different within right? within two years of each other. Right, uh, crazy films with two yeah. totally different leads. Like, yeah, there's no way George C. Scott's playing fucking Taylor. You although, know, what I'm although he would be great because you know he like yells every he time. He would fuck. Man, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm convinced the Apes would just be like, yo, just let this guy go. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's yeah. scary. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so they they get they see the tree or not the trees the the corn getting cut down and we got some people riding up on horses or not people. Yeah, we got some big ass black apes <laughs> looking scary as hell on yeah. black horses strapped to the T, and they start dumping on these people, catching them in nets, whacking them with sticks. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. They're like, we're killing the ones we can't catch, and the ones we can catch are getting thrown in a cage. Yeah. And I'm like, Jesus, I wonder if this was what it was like like when they got the slaves. I, I'm assuming. Oh God, it's it's there, got to be there's, similar. Because there's a lot in this film that you can equate with like oh, the civil rights oh movement. Oh, my God, bro. This film yeah. parallels really so crazy? many different things. Yes. It's it's crazy. And and yeah. Like from human to human, humans to animals, like human yeah. to earth, like – there are so many parallels you can go with yeah, on how this film can translate to real life. Because at the end of the day, it's about the one thing that makes the world a terrible place. You fear we don't understand. That was what I thought. Oh, I was going to say uh, white male insecurity. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I, and I, I can explain it once we get to the end of the film. <laughs> Okay. Okay. It's because of the years in which it was made. Yeah. Okay. We might be able to call that the fear of not of not knowing. Well, I, it could be. Yeah. But but think about who had like the weapons to destroy the world in '68. That is true. So white we'll man get there because yeah. th- that's that's definitely going to come up at the end. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So okay. So the we see, unfortunately. The black homie gets murked quick. <laughs> he does. I was like, the, the damn, smart guy. bro, the smartest the, the guy that could get him out of this situation, bro. Yeah, I'm like, of course, my man's got to die quick. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> we, got a, we got a black league going to be in this? Nice. Yeah. I didn't know. And then I was like, nope. He got about got about 20 minutes of screen time, 25. His, his name was Dodge, but he couldn't dodge he that He couldn't bullet. dodge that. That's what I'm like, bro, come on. You, <laughs> he could shot the back of the neck, You're supposed to be the quickest one, bro. I'm like, come on. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm just wait, messing. He could swim though. He could swim. <laughs> right? He's he's already an so, outlier. Yeah, we don't even know who this guy is. He can swim and he wasn't fast. So it's like, okay. Um uh, we yeah, we we get dying. it, yeah, and the dude's a fucking scientist. Yeah, he's he's a different breed. <laughs> but no, it, it did suck seeing him die. Yeah. And then you see Landon get fucked up, and I thought Landon died at first. So did I, because the way that he like fell. And yeah, I was everything. like, yo, he died. I thought, shit. I was like, when Charles Heston got shot, I was like, man, he could die. I was like, obviously, he ain't gonna die. He's the main character. Yeah, so well, well, they, like, he did lose a lot of blood. He but they did gave though. Him that they gave him the blood. Yeah, yeah. They, they had to. No, they were like, this dirty beast has lost so much blood. They're like, oh, they stink. Yeah, I'm like man, I'm like, oh, this is yeah. insane. I'm like, God, I like. You know, as a person of color, a lot of thoughts went through my head while I was watching this movie and the treatment God. of humans. As a person of color and a person of anti-cruelty, so so many thoughts were running through my head with this film. And, you know, how I portrayed humans, how the monkeys acted. How the it, way, it kind of turned the tables on. Yes, on what we know every day. Yes, yes. And I love that. And I love how they did that back then because especially from when this film came out it came out in the heart of the civil rights movement this film needed to be seen by everyone yeah i think this film actually came out uh 
probably a week before Martin Luther King MLK Jr. was assassinated. Died. Yeah, yeah. It, was like, it had to be right I think it was the end man. of March yep. when this film came out, and it was April 4th when he... Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So, so you're right. It's like right during this... Yeah, I hope he. I hope he got to swing through his local Cineplex and catch this before he got <laughs> popped, bro. Yeah, because like, he probably would have been like, he would finally, be like, at least. He's like, only... somebody get something here. Well, that's why. Uh, just really quick, since Rod Serling was the one writer, he did the Twilight Zone. A lot of Twilight Zone episodes were about whatever social injustices mm-hmm. were going on at the time. But since it was TV in the late fifties, early sixties, you had to use like white people and like. Alien, yeah, or whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> you couldn't really have the the actual thing you're trying to say, so it's palatable to people uh, well, that look like know. Charlton Heston. Yes. <laughs> Whereas by '68, you could like, oh, this is this is the best way we can show the tables turning. Yes, and well, In people a sci-fi actually setting. make them want to watch because you yeah, know, yeah. some people are like I don't want to see. If I'm going to see monkeys on the screen, they better go ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They better not be black. Yeah. You know yeah. It better, be, see it better be the Jungle Book. Mm-hmm. You know, I want King Louie or whatever. I better be watching whatever. the fucking circus, all right? Yeah, I yeah. I don't want to see no, I don't want to see them monkeys on my yeah. screen. So. I want to see like uh, Ronald Reagan in Bedtime for Bonzo. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> or, uh, or Clint Eastwood with uh, Clyde yeah, the Orangutan. Yeah, that, that, that movie's <laughs> funny, though. <laughs> Every which way but loose. I can't believe he did that movie. Yeah. But, so, they capture him. Yes. And, uh, Bright Eyes, we'll call him oh, that for oh, yeah, now. That's we'll, what she calls that's him. That's what she calls him. We'll call him Bright Eyes for now, and but later we'll switch it up to Taylor. So, Bright Eyes, which is our lead, he's effed up. He's on a table. He's getting a blood transfusion. He lost so much blood because he got shot in the neck. Yeah. And there's a doctor who comes in, and her name is, uh, Zero. Zero. And Zira is actually one of the best characters in the film. She is. She's um, she's hot for that shaven whatever. She's like, you're an ugly, yeah, non hairy like, son of a bitch. She's like, you're so. Oh, she said, but you're so ugly. ugly. <laughs> I was like, and it's so funny because it's like the monkey calling the human ugly. You yeah, know? yeah. Obviously, we'll get there because I got that. Yeah, yeah. Shit. But he did look. He definitely looked uglier when he shaved. That dude needs some facial hair. Oh, he looked great with the beard. With the beard, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He needed yeah, some yeah. facial he hair. When he great. shaved, I'm like, bro, you just made yourself look like a pedophile. <laughs> I'm like, uh, well, but, he, if he would have left the mustache, he would have. Yeah, he's he, or he would, a cop. He would have looked like a cop yeah. or a pedo. Well, maybe I, both. Yeah, they might be interchangeable. Yeah, I was like, maybe both. <laughs> but, so, so Zira, she automatically can see. Something is special about Bright Eyes. That's why she calls him Bright Eyes. Yeah. There's something. There's a spark. A of spark in his there. eyes. And he's got the blue eyes, and you know yeah. he is different. He's clearly he's better looking than the other guys. He's got a more lean frame. He stands up straighter. He's not so primitive. He so he's feels, a little more erect, is what you're saying. He is a little more erect. <laughs> I would use the word evolve, but oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's um he feels like the humans of that day where the other humans there. They feel very caveman like. Yeah, you know, yeah, they the are very they, the, uh devolved. Yes, they they kind of act ape like the way they climb the trees yeah. and they don't speak and they you know, they don't care about anything. Yeah. And not at all. They're just eating and banging and you know, running yeah. around, even though there wasn't enough chicks to go around, which is strange. Yeah. Um, like where's animals. all the chicks? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um but whatever. So Zero knows right away. I got to protect this guy because, of course, they just want to kill him. No, of course. That's all they want to do is because that's what they do with Landon. They give him like a lobotomy. Dude. And like when you see the yeah. star on his head, I'm like, holy hell. Yeah. So the 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 middle part of the film is really Zira, her boyfriend Cornelius, yeah. learning about Bright Eyes and his abilities because he can't speak at the moment because his neck is injured. So once he's able to speak, it's game over. And yeah, because because before that, she learns he's different because he grabs her pen and paper. Yeah, he steals it and writes and my name writing, is my Taylor. Name is Taylor. And then she's stop like, calling me Bright Eyes. Yep, and, my name's and she Taylor. respects that. And yeah. she's like, all right, Taylor, all right, Taylor gang, I got you. Yeah, I'll let you be. I'll call you that. <laughs> and <laughs> that is how she spoke too. Mm-hmm, that's exactly. You guys yeah. know these are direct quotes when I say yes, this stuff. Yes, <laughs> yes. So. She respected that, and Cornelius, of course, is on the fence. And at first, you kind of think Cornelius is a dick, but then you understand 
you 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 understand why he's the way he is because he's seen things and he yes. knows that there's something out there and there's people out there and there's things that the powers that be aren't telling them. Yeah. But he's afraid of losing his career, his life, his love, which is his work. Yeah. And in order to do his work, it's one of those things where it's like and he's up for a raise. Yeah, he he's up for a raise, yeah. promotion, all yeah, that. Yeah, like our life. We're going to have a life We're going to have a life. And, and he plays like, we're going to get married. We're going to get rich. We're going to do our thing and yeah. have status, power, and longevity. But if we don't respect the council, yeah. we ain't going to get that. I think they're both doctors. It's just he's an archaeologist. He's an archaeologist. And she's, she's like more, a, a medical um, yeah, or a psychologist. She's a psychologist. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's an animal mm-hmm. psychologist. And she... She understands Taylor right away. They, she understands that he is sentient and he has a personality. Yes. And he's not. That she's never seen never any seen humans any, before. Any, yes. Yeah. And so she tells Zayas this, Dr. Zayas, and he's a dick, but we'll break that down later because yeah, yeah. He's a it dick can be a argued. Yeah. So it's like, it can be yeah. argued why he's a dick. Because at first, I'm like, this guy's a total asshole. But then I'm yeah. like, like you said, there's clues all over. I'm like, this guy knows some stuff that he don't want other people to know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you and you know he knows that. Yeah. It's almost like he's part of some secret society. They don't mm-hmm. go into this. They don't, but, but he definitely is. Yeah. But he's probably like sworn to secrecy. Like mm-hmm. only certain all people know. All the coat dudes yes, are no. definitely in this yes. like masonry fucking yeah, club yeah. where no one knows what you actually do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, what does a right. free mason actually do? I don't know. And they, uh, you're right. The, I think their outfits, because the guys on like the, the foot soldiers, let's say, wore a they different were, outfit than, they, yep, the than foot like foot soldiers Zira had, like, and their Cornelius. Uniforms. Yep. It was yeah. like a black, very militant style uniform. Yeah. Yeah. Where the doctors had their uniform was like the jacket, with the little green sleeves on it. Yeah. And then you had the orange dudes who, you know, those were high up dudes. Because yeah. that's why I think Taylor says it seems like some apes are because uh, cause are more equal than others. The, yes. That's what yes, it was. That's yes. what he says. And that, that's yeah. a very good line. Yeah. And he's and it's, it's like all it is a reflection of our society right now and yeah. how humans are. Yeah, how the totally. government's in power. All these dudes make the rules and they tell us, they trickle it down and tell us how to think. In fact, you notice... Uh, the one like Dr. Zayas and those other guys are like orangutans. Zira and Cornelius are chimps. They're chimps, and, yeah. And the 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 soldiers are gorillas. Oh, gorillas, yes. yeah. And, you're right. And, and look at it, and you could break that down in a society too. Yeah, people yeah. like the gorillas are kind of the the muscle, the muscle. Yeah, and we can compare gorillas to real people as people have done. Yes, and but those gorillas aren't smart enough to be doctors or be on the council yeah so although yes we're all monkeys apes chimps whatever or primates whatever you want to call us we're still separated yeah there's still a class structure within the apes just like with humans yeah so that's what that's why the fucking writing's so good (laughs) i was like this shit is superbly written i was like they didn't miss anything. No. I'm like, this is one of the best movies, best social commentary films ever made. Yeah. By far. And it's still very relevant to right this second. It's it's almost the movie equivalent of Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. What's Going On? Even though, Real shit. Yeah. Even though it's like 52 years old, you can... And What's Going On, I mean. Because obviously this film yeah, is 56 this, years old yeah, now. <laughs> but, close enough. But, you know, it's you can listen to it today and it feels like it's about today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is crazy. I've never thought about that, but you're right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's it's nuts the the class system between the apes and all these apes though they all know and feel we're better than these beings. Oh yeah, and it's like even the gorillas, even though they're the lowest man on the totem pole, they're like at least I ain't a human. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, exactly. At least I ain't a human. Yeah, and it's like I'm sure throughout history there's been groups of people who felt like at least I'm still a man walking on two feet. Look what they're doing to all these wildlife, all yeah. these animals, because, you there know, were animals have been that, murdered in mass numbers. Look, there's people that looked at other people and were like, I'm poor white trash, but at least I'm at not least that At least I am black. Yeah, I'm like, and that sounds terrible. It, it is. It's yeah. like, bro, a, a yeah. poor white trash dude would rather be poor white trash than be a middle-aged, or middle um, class. middle-class black dude. Yeah, for sure. and like, that's terrible. He's like, I'd rather live in a trailer with no windows. <laughs> Like I got no fucking no teeth. plumbing, yep. yeah, like no bros, teeth. no AC, yeah, like no electricity. Yeah. But God damn it, I'm white. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it's like what? And that's exact, bro. That's exactly. But how dude, it you're is. not washed. You don't look white anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you I'm like, like you just but, came out of a coal mine. But it's like, listen, I'm like, 
but a rich white dude would not fuck with you, bro. Yeah, exactly. yeah, like, yeah, a rich exactly. Rich white dude, like exactly. I don't know you. It's, it's it's almost like your boy. It's like Trump wouldn't fuck with none of these dudes that <laughs> he boy, loving, right? <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Yo, if, if he pulled up in the trailer park, they'd be like, "It's Donald." He'd be like, "Give me the." Fuck out of here. Yeah, what, what, you took the wrong turn. Yeah, wrong turn. Get me out of here yeah. now. Shit. Yeah, that's true. Like, that's, in. That, that's the one time he would wake up since he's yeah. been falling asleep so much. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, shit, where am I? <laughs> Normally when he says, oh, shit, it means he just shit his he pants. He shit his pants. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, he is going to be 78. He, yeah, that's had, like, he's he has incontinence issues. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I'm like, both of them are old as shit. Yeah, I'm like, we're yeah. talking about two seniors here. Yeah. But, um, Beyond seniors. Right? You're a senior at 55 now. It, oh, is that really Yeah, 55, age? you're considered a senior. Yeah. Dang. These, I feel like seniors are like 60s to me. That, that's, Wasn't it like 62 for a Because obviously, I know well, well, that 55 used to be the retirement age, not fucking, considered a senior. I know 55-year-olds who move better than 20-year-olds. I know. You know? So I'm like, I know, oh, but they're 55. senior citizens. They get all the discounts. You're right. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, sorry, sorry. Oh, quick so aside. yeah, so you you see right away the dynamic between the apes, the way the structure set up. It ain't no different than how we are here right, right now. now. Yeah, you know, yeah, nothing's changed. Nothing's That's the crazy change. part. Nothing's changed. Yeah, it's dressed up better. Yeah, you know, what I mean, we put nice clothes on a lot of the stuff. We, and pretty we, makeup. We polish a turd. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> it's really yes, all we it polish is. a turd. It's but still the a turd. ideals are still deep, deep, deep rooted. Yes, and. It's going to be like that well past all of our lifetimes here, even yeah. yours. You know, um, yeah. she's a lot younger than us, but yeah. it is it is what it is. But I like that this film doesn't shy away from that. And it shows us like, guys, this is what we have done. I didn't write this because I just was thinking all yeah. this shit. This is a reflection of what I've seen. Yeah, because it's different from the book. The book is a different planet. They explain why Nova is named Nova. Okay. You know, things like that. Like... Like they named her Nova the the uh, in the book the uh, astronauts because when they she swam with them uh-huh. when they were swimming and they saw her and she's like the most beautiful thing they've ever seen uh-huh. and she's so much better looking than all the other people she shines like a Nova, like a Nova uh, yeah in the sky, Nova in the sky. Mm-hmm. yeah that's why they named I her mean, Nova Nova was fucking hot <laughs> in the movie I was like this woman's very good looking. yeah Linda I was Harrison like, this is without a question the best looking person in this movie and she yeah. doesn't bore you with conversation no not none not a word <laughs> you know what I mean I love when he's trying to like teach her how to talk she definitely picks up on language though a yeah. little bit not fully but she definitely she knows when he's saying good things to her yes and when he's not yeah I think she can pick up on those cues mm-hmm. yeah and so, yeah, so Nova, we can talk about her for a second. So okay. Nova gets locked up with bright eyes because Zero wants, Zero him, to wants him to fuck. Yeah, yeah, she wants him to mate. Because what are their kids going to be yeah, like? Bro, their kids would be good looking and smart. Yeah. So it's like, and, you know, of course, the council's like, hell Holy no. Holy shit, you know what Zira is into? She's in an animal play. Eugenics. <laughs> Cause that's what eugenics was about. Yeah, getting getting the best, the best yeah. breeds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Holy so she shit. Was, yeah, she was into that back so, in the day. It was so I, I I just realized that that's what the uh, like where the science was going. They're trying to figure out, or she was, how to get the humans to be she was more advanced. Create a, and she was going to create a master race. Yeah, like, she was. I mean, that's it. Would have been like South Africans in the late eighties. You know, look, they she felt like they were the master race. She could be their version of Hitler. She, I couldn't tell because all the facial hair. If yeah, she had the mustache, if she had the stash, yeah, <laughs> she already had a lot of hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, oh my God, you're right though. That's what she was. Yeah, she do. was trying to make the master like the best version of the human she could make. Yeah, she's yeah. like, look at this tall, because they can be equal to smart. Us. Yes, and this good looking, like even though she's not attracted to humans, she knows this woman is better looking than the other ones. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. She like, can she can tell the difference between like. Brad Pitt and Paul Giamatti. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I mean, we look. Okay, we can go look at it. Dogs. We know a German Shepherd's prettier than a Chihuahua. Yes. You know. Yes. I'm we we're, we know that. It's not like oh, yeah. I want to. I have no interest in them. I'm not saying look how sexy that Chihuahua <laughs> is. <laughs> no, but we know yeah. one's better looking than the others. Yes. So, you know, yeah. So or those cool. hairless cats. I Compared to those, every other though. cat. They're hideous, but I love them. They're so, <laughs> See, but you just you, said they're hideous. You, but have you ever held one? They're so sweet. Why would I want to? <laughs> they're sweet, bro. It's like Mr. Bigglesworth. From Austin, Austin Powers. Powers. Oh. Shaves them? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, but like, 
But dude, you're a cat person. I have a cat you're guy. You're a bro. cat person. You love pussy. I sure do. It's, <laughs> it's just hey, it's like in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. She said we love pussy. He said yes, we do. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, good old pussy. Every fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, once upon a no. time gets quoted daily, day. really? daily, no, yeah. I really. Watched, I watched and it now she watched it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he was quoting it to me yesterday, but I told him every time I see you, you quote "Once upon a time" to me. I got a line. There's a line God, for every situation. Every There's a line. I, I still have to finish it. I know that's shocking. Bro, we, it's been a year. Do an episode. It's been a year. Now you gotta start it all over. Yeah, you can drop in. It's bro. So yeah, so funny, bro. He's like, well, wow. I'm, I'm getting more into into Leo since you had me watch Inception, bro. Bro, he's the man, right? Yeah, he went yeah. hard in there, Cause, bro. Because, dude, he was uh, like, I didn't never saw him as like that an action. physical. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. That's the most physical role he's ever done yeah. by far. I was like, Leo out here shooting guns, running. He was yeah. the as Tom Cruise, bro. Yeah. Leo was run, right. You ain't never seen Leo run. Leo was running. Because look, even in Titanic, the most action he got was like Jack, you're trembling. I'm the king of the world. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're right. You're yeah, right. Right when he's painting, that was definitely the most action he got. And it was just a stick figure with two circles on the side. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, but. Um, yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. So, so uh, we're at the part where uh, Taylor, they, they find out, Dr. Zayas finds out that Taylor can write. uh can write mm-hmm. and communicate so he wants to have him lobotomized yep because he knows he's a threat to the yeah. to society so taylor escapes mm-hmm. a few times well, well, well this time he escapes and it's a big chase scene he finds out what happens to dodge they stuff him and put him in like a museum yep. oh my god that we'll get there in my nitpicks. Yeah, yes, yeah. because I have a nitpick, and I know you noticed it. We won't talk because he was it ashy as hell. He was very ashy. <laughs> that's not. That was not the. He was basically white. It looked yeah, like they yeah. put baby powder on him. Yeah, but, yeah. But, he was ashy, Larry. From yeah, he was at Dave Chappelle. I'm about to go from ashy to classy. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> so, but no, um, yeah. So he escapes, and man, the escape chase is crazy because like they 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 set it up though because the dude who is. But like right before they say uh, that they're gonna take him, the the guard is talking to the guys. Who are like they they want to do whatever to him, and the guard's mm-hmm. like, "But his throat is almost healed." Uh huh. Why would they do that? Uh huh. And he's like, "All right." So they kind of set it up. So he, yeah, the chase. He's running. He's dude, running. He's fucking physical. Physical, as hell. physical climbing, jumping. Dude, on he's shit, incredible. Dude. Charlton Heston. I was man. like, that's. I was like, dude, this motherfucker is moving in this movie. <laughs> and like. Yeah. I'm like, he was rolling. And barefoot. And dude, barefoot. Practically naked fight, the whole time. Fighting monkeys. Yeah. Stealing horses. Shooting at him. I'm like, yeah. yo, when he like, when he's about to jump off, I mean, they catch him when they finally get him in the big net. Yeah. I'm like, dude, he evaded like 50 apes, bro. Yeah. And these dudes. And, and they're the I mean, gorillas. These gorillas. These dudes yeah. are fucking huge, bro. Yeah. Like, it's yo, not just the chimps or the orangutans. They got guns. They got everything. Yeah. And he just clearly is smarter than all of them because I'm like, bro, obviously y'all know this dude's intelligent. He's evaded y'all and y'all have all the resources. Yes, it's he like has none. you got a whole block of cops and one guy gets away, he's better than y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that simple. You yeah. Know? Now they caught him, but... And, and what happens when they catch him? He speaks. He do- oh, that's to right. The apes he, oh, which he time. says, I might as well throw can, that crow. Can, yeah. you, you want me to say Go it? ahead, you can say he's it. He's like... Get your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty apes. I was like, oh, yeah. God. I'm like, rudeness. Yeah, but like. But fuck them. And and everyone, and even Zira's like, what the? She's like, this guy. She's like, I just wet myself. She did. She, <laughs> and it wasn't in a sexual way, no, scientifically. No. Yeah, you know it was I mean? like, holy crap, because this is what I've been waiting yep. for. She's a like, human. I knew, I knew. She's like, because she kept saying, she's like. Can't you tell he's like it's like he's responding to you yes, before yes. before he got his voice back? Like yeah. she's like, it's like he's answering you. He's like, nah, this motherfucker's stupid. Yeah, I'm like, but bro, he's has answering. to say Yeah, that. yeah, he's lying. He's he, like, I know he is. He signed an NDA with Trump. He, he couldn't he say definitely anything. signed the NDA, bro. <laughs> he's in that allegiance, bro. So. Yeah. So it's like, I can't sure, he's no. Why would he? So they punish him, they lock him back up, they yeah. plan to kill him. 
and we're operate on him. And they even separate him from his woman. Oh, so yeah. they put oh, yeah. Nova in a different cage. Oh, but... yeah. And they st- the hose on him. Yeah, yeah. They I, as if that's man. not yeah. blatant, too. Yeah, I'm like, jeez. They're, they're, they're I'm like, man. Where'd where, where they get that where they got? Yeah, I was like, what, <laughs> what group of people were hosed at some yeah. point of time and recently? That's, and that's when he's like, it's a madhouse. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a sounded, madhouse. Sounded like anthrax or yeah. something in the 80s. I'm like, yeah. But <laughs> so they <laughs> hose him down. And, you know, of course... You know the homies is looking after him. Yeah. So you know they got to break him out of jail. Oh, yeah. What's his name? Lucius. Lucius. Uh, Zero's yeah. nephew. Yeah, Lucius. So Lucius breaks. Wait. Lucius breaks him out before or after the court case? Oh, it was after. That's after. So oh. we'll get there. We're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're going I'm way sorry. too far yeah. ahead. Yeah. So they pretty much are like, we're putting this dude on trial. Yeah. And we're putting Cornelius and Zero. Zero on trial. Yeah. Because of hearsay. Because you guys is doing stuff. We don't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The orangutans, the the ones the in charge. Suits. I, I just call them the orange suits. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what they were. They're the only dudes wearing orange. Yeah, they're the guys running things. They are, and they clearly do not give a fuck what you gotta say because <laughs> no. they're like, they're like, yeah, all right, go ahead and speak. She's like, okay, let's. All right, shut up. That was that, enough. Yeah, <laughs> that was uh, enough. You yeah, we gave you a chance. Like, yeah, you didn't say, say yeah, what we wanted to say hear. anything worthwhile. Yeah. Like, you know, that's pretty much what they just do. You say something that starts making sense. You get zipped. Yeah. And they're like, yep, quiet down. So yeah. they, You're right, because uh, she asked, she's like, if he doesn't have any rights, then why is he called the accused? Mm-hmm. He yes. has the right to know what he's accused of. Yeah. And, and they're like, but he's human. It, it, they're like, well, he's not human, so... Or so, he's human, so... He has no rights. Mm-hmm. So they're like, so, F him. We can do whatever we want with him, essentially. So, so there's no animal rights in this world. <sighs> None. None. And no. they don't look at themselves as animals. Because they call the humans animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They that, say that, that's they what stink, I mean. clean them up, hose them down like yeah. dogs in the streets. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm like, jeez. I'm like, and I just love seeing humans in that way. Yeah. And people getting to see the suffering that they put upon yes. groups of animals, people, all that. Yes, yeah. Because, you know. Because you can put anything in there. In, anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, look at the way we treat cows. I'm like, bro. It's these, a great equation. Yeah, yeah, the way we treat cows, oh my lord. If you guys spent some hard time on a dairy farm, oh. spent some good time on a dairy farm. Have you? You you've probably milked it for I, all its worth. I I, I I know what happens there. It ain't good, you wow. know. Cows cows have feelings like we do. And when you take their children from them, they cry. Like you like if you took it like yeah. if a mom went to the hospital, pushed out her child, Doctor's like, all right, here's your baby girl. This is little Lisa. Oh, let me psych. That's ours. You're yeah. never gonna see her again. Wait, yeah. what? Somebody Wait, hold wants, up. Somebody <laughs> wants veal parmesan. Yeah, I'm like, bro, I, I, yeah. I need baby leg today. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-mm, good eating. You know, chain them, chain the babies up to a post so they can't move. Keep them, them baby legs soft and tender like yeah. a veal. Like, yeah. you know. So, anyways, there's a lot that can be compared can tell, to here. I can tell you, you have beef. I got, I got, I got, I got a little beef. I mean, yeah. it, listen, a people, vegan who has beef. Yep, yep. You know, they gonna do what they do. It is what it is. It's uh, terrible. You're right because they think about what they do to chickens, man. Dude, my lord! Like, look at like look at McDonald's alone. Look at like, you know how they clone them and do all that just freaky shit. To just them. really quick, my Give problem them steroids, bro. Like, where does the nugget come from? I'm assuming roosters, bro, but still. Nu- no, bro. Nuggets are a combination of a lot of disgusting things. Listen. So it's like the hot dog of chicken products? Yes, yeah, yes. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Wow. I was like, that's, wow. bro, that's precisely what it is. Yeah, bro. Like, let me tell you something. McNuggets ain't where it's at. Uh, but, uh, go to, go to, yeah, or go see, to the store and buy them legit. Or just make your own. Yeah. I, I don't, uh, the reason I don't like Chick-fil-A is because they're like, a Christian organization he hates gays. That, that no, but they I they like fun conversion therapy. But but but, 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 here, <laughs> but, but but enough about Mike Pence, right? <laughs> so the thing is, they say they're a Christian organization, so they're not open Sundays. But all they do is kill. Isn't one of the commandments, "Thou shalt not kill"? Yep, they kill. Because you say, I know that's the Old Testament, and we can argue that point too. But I if feel you like say that you're a still Christian, stand. yeah, if you, if you say you're a Christian organization. Why are you killing so much? See, that, that's, you're contributing and, to a lot and, and of stuff. And that's not even the, the conversion yeah. stuff. That's not even like like the the art 
the artifacts that are like uh, war uh, crime, like stolen stuff, like the 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 tablets from uh, Mesopotamia and stuff. Jeez. Like that, that's not even that stuff. It's just the basic. Like you say, you're a Christian organization. Thou shalt not kill. Why are you murdering all these chickens? Because they're lives too. A lot of them. It's like the difference. What's the difference between being pro-choice and pro-life? Um, the choice. Yeah, pro-choice. <laughs> You would eat eggs. Pro life, you would eat chicken. <laughs> yeah, that's I guess the so. difference between. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> that's, that's that's the real difference. So that's funny. One's chicken salad, one's egg salad. Yep. That's the difference between <laughs> in in the Chick Fil A world. Yeah. Sorry, that's that's my little soapbox. Anyways, I mean, we don't we don't eat meat, so we don't. Yeah. That's why we're so. I you don't either, don't do you? Meat. No, she she be she's a carnivore. Bro. I, uh, the only meat I, I saw blood coming. I saw blood coming down her face. I, I was talked like, about eating pork one time when he got disgusted. Dude, no, uh, she, <laughs> no, she, she was blood. she doing an she impression was, of Kermit the Frog? I was frog like, though. please tell me that's human blood and you're a vampire now. And she was like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> No, I'm just playing. That's terrible. Nah, she, you know, listen, I don't I don't judge folks for what they do. It's just a choice I made for myself, you know. But wow. just know your eating choices do affect others. Yeah, they do. Um, and and our planet. Yeah, like, that that's true, because you're right. Every everything has feelings, even plants, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. That's why you sing the plants to get them to grow. Mm-hmm, well, I know. Yeah. Maybe, How come every time I work. sing the plants, they, they just die? die. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they just die. <laughs> Is it me? Anyway, sorry, sorry. So, Soapbox theater. So we get a crazy trial where they yes. pretty much are like, all right, the Basically, Zayas is an asshole the whole trial. Yes, okay? Dr. Zayas, the, the head, I guess he's the head. He's the head. He's the top dog. But he's not even the president, though, which is weird, because they have a president They there. do, but he was calling the shots. Yeah. Like, he's like the I vice principal, know. almost. Yeah, Because, yeah. like, you never deal with the principal. You yeah, always deal with the true. vice principal. I yeah. never dealt with the principal. But, so, the trial sucks. It's a, The trial's actually great, because it breaks down... A lot of the feelings of society, why the monkeys feel like they're better than the humans. And yeah. A lot of questions are answered in the trial. So the trial is actually one of the best scenes because. Why are all apes created equal? Yes. Yeah. Which they aren't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like you could say all men are created equal, but guess what? In the eyes of a l- probably more than less, they aren't. You know, you know, I got my percentage of theories. Oh my god! <laughs> look, look, we hold these truths to be self-evident, right? That all men are created equal. So, what the hell is a three-fifths compromise? Yeah, you bro. <laughs> three-fifths. Yeah, yeah sorry, man. Look, three, I can't even get four-fifths. Look, though. some <laughs> some dude with wooden teeth came up with that, right? A wooden teeth. Bro. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so that's that's what I'm saying. It's the commentary in this film is a one now. We could say that you may not like this film depending on your own personal belief structures. You may That's think true. it's a piece of crap. You may think it's propaganda. So, but I didn't. Now, after the trial, um, Taylor has a conversation with the, what was he like, the head uh, surgeon? Was it, was the, that who he was talking to? I thought he was talking with Zayas. No, it wasn't Zayas. Are you sure? Was, I thought it was. I thought it was the dude who was like, I pretty much got the choice whether you're going to get operated on or not. That wasn't Zayas. That was Zayas. Really? Yeah. yeah, it was he, Zayas. He had a different costume on. Did I, he have green on? I think he had a different thing on because of the trial. Didn't he have just a different... I didn't know that was Zayas. I, I think it was, was Zayas. Because Zayas is the one who wanted him to get that operation anyway. But he was kind of giving him an op to like get free in a way. He he was, but I think that was Zayas, I believe. Okay. All right. Well, he was talking to Zayas, and he's like, he's pretty much like, look, bro, you're going to die unless, you know, you pretty much, he was like, look, what did he say? What was the deal? There was a compromise. There was, and I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. I don't put anything with sound on. Oh, oh but- yeah. I, I just wanted to. To to see because I think it was Zayas who he was talking uh, to. It, we'll call it Zayas. It's fine. Okay. He's Zayas. He's Zayas. All right. So he's talking to Zayas, and he, but pretty, what was the deal? What was the compromise? It was something like, um, you know, you didn't he wasn't he just gonna let him leave? He was like, but it was under a condition. Yeah, like I can't remember exactly what it was. It was something to the effect of like he can't. I, I think he just can't have contact with anyone because no one could know. 
really that I, I know this probably isn't exactly it, but it was something to the effect of like he needed him to help preserve whatever the, the ideals. Yeah, 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 yeah the ideals because every. Taylor stood for everything they didn't. Yeah, he he stood against everything yes. that they stood for. And and his his existence alone just yeah. breaks down all their laws and theories. Because even Zaya says at one point, like, I've been waiting a long time for you to get here. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. does say that. Which means and he knew. Which means that there was a record somewhere of that flight mm-hmm. and how they never landed and how they were supposed to come back. They had to know. Yeah. He had to know. And then, obviously, Zayas knew about all the caves and all the artifacts, all the stuff Cornelius yeah. is talking about. And they're like, that's hogwash. And Zayas, Zayas sitting here agreeing, even though he know in the back of his head, like, everything this motherfucker's saying true. He knew what Taylor was going to find, his destiny. Yeah, his destiny. He, he says that. Yeah, he knew he was gonna what he was going to find. He may not have known what it would represent to Taylor, but he knew it would represent the end of Taylor's world. Yes. Is what it would yes. mean. And he's like, I think he's going to suffer more. Yeah. I think he was like, fuck and, him. And, and I think that was actually the, basically the compromise he was trying to do was to save him from that kind of suffering. Yeah. I think is what it was. And that could be why they lobotomized Landon and they wanted to do the same to Taylor because he knew the truth would hurt him more mm-hmm. than which it kind of yeah. I mean that, that's bro. That's what makes the ending so good. You can yeah. talk about the end. It's ambiguous, so you can talk about it all day long. Yeah, but so they throw this man back in jail in the slammer. And <laughs> yeah, and that's when Lucius comes along. Lucius comes in, my man Luce, which is uh, Cornelius, was his little cousin, his little Zira's, nephew. Zira's nephew. Oh, Zira's nephew. All right, yeah, Zira's yeah. nephew. He pull up. And, and he's, like he's a, a young. Yep, he's a young kid who clearly is just like a lot of the younger people at back in the, at that time. Were like, hey, maybe this shit ain't right. Yeah, he's like, fight the power, fight the power. Yeah, yeah, he's like, he essentially would have been a hippie. Yeah, you yeah, know, he would have been like the starter hippies. Yeah, so yeah. He's like, yo, what's good? We're gonna take this guy to the zoo, you know, because he can talk. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where he's he lying to. Yeah, he's like, that's where he belongs. He's lying to the guard. And he's like, yeah. you see them papers. He's like, because Julius bullshit. is the guard. Yep. Yeah. And, Yo, he takes that bat from him, whacks yeah. that motherfucker over the head. Yeah, he does. They break out, and he says, "Hey, we gotta get Nova." And Cornelius, or not, or uh, uh, Lucius, Lucius, he's like, "Hey, I was sent to only get you, big dog." And he said, "Listen, <laughs> you want me? I want her. That's the deal." And he's yeah. like, "All right, but I can't protect y'all." He's like, "Whatever, I'm shit. I'm taking my woman with me." Because guess yeah. what? He, you know, he was, you know, he was horny. All right. Oh yeah. She was hot. And he was like, bro, we're going to start the best civilization in this <laughs> right here, bro. Yeah. You mean? He's like, she yeah. don't talk low maintenance? Come on. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm just, all right, I'm, <laughs> I'm just being goofy. But for real, yeah, I mean, yeah. and that's, you know, in that day and age. Yeah. So, yeah. So they uh they break out nice. And, and they, they meet up with Cornelius yep, and Zero. Yep. And they meet up with them out in the streets. And they're going back to where it all started. They want to go back to where Cornelius found the artifacts in his research, where they first... Um, it's almost a, near where they landed. Where they landed, almost. yeah. yeah. They, like, basically the land part of it. Yeah. And so they got horses, The carriages, Forbidden Zone. The Forbidden Zone, that's what it was called. Yeah, yeah. They got horses, carriages, food, supplies, guns, ammo, everything. They're ready to roll. Yeah. But of course, you know, they're hot on their trail. Yeah, you know, they're looking for them. And, but, and, they're, and they're in a wagon, so they're yeah, not going fast. Right. And I'm like, y'all Cause, riding cause, like this little house on the fucking prairie. Well, well yeah, because they don't have <laughs> any <laughs> real modern They don't. Things. Even though y'all pulled up on a spaceship. Yeah, because even with the blood transfusion, it's like old kind of hoses hose. and stuff. Yeah, I was like, bro, yeah. you would think like this yeah. would be some quick, fast, like yeah. futuristic type stuff. And which I like that. It's not yeah, very it's futuristic. It's yeah, really it's lo-fi. Yeah. yeah, They're like, shit. They were quite bare bones. They're yeah. using old cages made out of like bamboo or something. Yeah, shit. that's what it yeah. was. Yeah. Like, so all they were very primitive still. Yeah. So, yes. But once once Taylor gets out, he's like, oh, fuck y'all. Yeah. I'm, I'm the guy. Yeah. He ain't taking no crap. He's like, give me a gun and 50 rounds. I want some of that food. I want my chick. He yeah. starts calling the shots. He does. And he does. They don't like it, but they know they got to kind of, if they want any shot to get through this, they got to listen to him. Yeah. Because if he is able to train other humans, they're done for. They're it. done. And, they're it, like, Yo. and Zayas knows it because he knows that. 
there's more to humans than meets the eye. Oh, well, they're they're the transformers yes, in this world. Way more, yeah. He's yeah. Like, we could call Heston Optim- Optimus Prime. Yeah, you know actually, saying? yeah, like, we really could. Is. Yeah. But because he does like he really does transform when they break out. He oh, shaves yeah. his face. He looks hideous. Yeah, and <laughs> even even it's only because of his hair. If he would have shorter hair, his face wouldn't have looked bad. Yeah, it, it's yeah, because his it's, hair was like so weird. Because he, he was, was kind of going bald, he was yeah, doing he was doing he like had a Trump. interesting. Yeah, he had an interesting male pattern baldness going on. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was not normal. No, no. But either way, he looked hideous with yeah, that shaved face. He right? did. And, and Zero calls him out. She's like, all of a sudden, you look less intelligent and less. Yeah, high. yeah, yeah. Because Cornelius is less ape like too. You know, he's less ape like now because yeah. he doesn't have hair on his face. Yeah, Just having hair on your face makes you more like an ape. You're right. You know, so. Obviously, they're... And that's the way to separate him. You're right. I didn't mm-hmm. even think about yep. it. Yep. So, the hair on his face definitely was something that would obviously be more attractive to their their peeps. Yeah. So, he's like, I don't give a shit, bro. He's like... Because what does he say? He's like, in my world, only a kid your age, um, Lucius, would be rocking a beard like yeah. this. And he's yeah. like, I don't go in for fads. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah I literally <laughs> had that in my best clothes. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> what? So, the council shows up. They pretty much kidnap Zeus. Yeah. And, and Taylor's like, listen, bro, here's and, the deal. And they prove that there was a human civilization yep. before. The baby theirs. doll, all the st- art- yeah. artifacts in the cave, the baby dolls, all the scriptures, everything. And they're like, bro, this is yeah. this is here, Sean. This is 700 years before our people started. Yeah. Like, once, all- once the baby doll starts talking. Yep. They're like, yeah. They were like, and Zeus is like, I'll tell you right now, I don't care what you do. This shit getting shut. Down. Yeah, he, he knew. <laughs> yeah, no one can find like, this. Hey, nobody finding this shit yeah, ever. He, no he turned in the Shaka Khan. He's he like, really ain't nobody, did. Yeah. ain't nobody. <laughs> he definitely did. He started dancing with he the broom did. and everything. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so my man was like, so they tie him up and make they cut a deal with him. Um, uh, Taylor cuts a deal with the monkeys, and essentially, you give me some supplies and my freedom. All right, y'all take y'all dude and do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. He's your problem. Because I'm like, because Taylor was like, listen, I killed this motherfucker. I don't give a shit. What do you got to lose? Yeah, because I'll be leaving anyway. Yep, I'll be out of here. Peace. Yeah. So he's like, I'll shoot this motherfucker. No problem. And he's, and of course, Zayus being a dick, that's all you humans know how to do. All y'all do is kill and yeah. be destructive and violent, which... Oh yeah, because he had Cornelius read that like he had him read that little that, piece of scripture. Yeah, yeah twenty nine, mm-hmm. Act twenty nine or whatever. Yeah, yep. And as frustrating as Cornelius is, or not Cornelius, um, Zaius is, he's not wrong on a lot of this stuff. No, he's and, not wrong about human nature. That's the thing about good villains, though. Mm-hmm. They are like, smart. They yeah, know. Lex I, Luthor was smart. Yeah, like, he he was trying. Lex Luthor was trying to save the world from an alien menace. Yes, or what he saw was an alien menace. He just went about it in a fucked up way. Yeah, because <laughs> he didn't know any other way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and Zayas, same thing. Like I'm like, he's like, if I you were put in Zayas's position. It would be hard to say you would do the right thing, bro. Yeah. You'd be like, I got millions on millions of people to hanging on my words. But what is the right thing? To him, he was doing the right he thing. Was, yeah, to him, he's like, in order to preserve my people, we have to blow, we this, have shit to blow this shit up. I have to yeah. lie. And it's like, I might do the same thing if I think this is a threat to my whole existence and yeah. everyone around me, everyone I care about and love. You know zay has got a wife, kids, family, grandkids, yeah, pension yeah. plan. You know what I mean? He got, <laughs> yeah. He got a fucking red Cadillac in the driveway. Like, yeah. He got bills. He got great grandkids probably by now. He's like, bro, you know how much Christmas costs? He's like, <laughs> so he's like, you know, uh, they want to have Christmas at granddad's every fucking year. I got to keep the fucking lights on. Yeah. And I'm like, as fucking much as I hated him, I understood him 100%. I understood him 100%. And Heston's getting ready to leave. And... They ask, um, Zira and Cornelius ask, like, well, what's he going to find out there? And Zayas tells him his destiny. destiny yeah. And that's exactly what that motherfucker finds. Yeah. And the very end of the film, it's been parodied a lot of times. One of my favorites is Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Oh. Um, when they when Jay's on the beach banging the sand. <laughs> Damn you all. Hell. <laughs> he said in this world, we do not spank the monkey. The monkey will spank us. <laughs> I'm like this guy. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not even supposed to be here today. 
<laughs> and they got Dante laying on the table with the top of his head cut off, bro. Like, and their monkeys are playing on it. Great film. If you guys haven't seen, if you're a Kevin Smith fan, definitely watch Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. But so they start cruising, and he's feeling good. He's like, I got my bitch. I got some fresh fruit. I got a gun. Yeah. My monkeys ain't effing with me. We about to, we either about to start fresh or get up out of here. Well, he sees something. On the coast. Yep. Sticking out of the sand, out of the water. What does he see? The top part of the Statue of Liberty. And what does that tell you? He's he's like, I'm home. I'm home. I'm home the whole time. And what else does it tell you? It tells you that it's, at the time, in 1968, it's the middle of the Cold War. Mm Mm-hmm. So, what's going to happen if we end up nuking ourselves? This is what's going to happen. Fear of a black planet. Mm -hmm. The the monkeys are going to take over. (laughs) Really, if you think about it, it sounds terrible. And but to me, I looked at it like I looked at it like all this did was prove that Zayas was right. Oh yeah, that too. I was looking at it more of like social commentary for that time. But yeah, you're right. I was looking at it as just. A take on human nature. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what... And, yeah. I mean, Zayas was right. These humans will destroy, inevitably, themselves and us. Well, here's the, th- the thing. Like, there's a really great... We might have to uh, go into quotes, because one of my favorite quotes is really super long. And That's a long quote. That's a paragraph. Well, it's it's <laughs> the first words in the entire film. Well, I had, yeah, I had some very, very early, early words in the film. Because it's like, uh, Taylor's saying, and that completes my final report until we reach touchdown. Mm-hmm. We're now on full automatic in the hands of the computers. I've tucked my crew in for the long sleep, and I'll be joining them soon. You're reading me now. In less than an hour, we'll finish our six month out of Cape Kennedy. It's before it was Cape Canaveral. Mm-hmm. Uh, six months in deep space by our time that is according to Dr. Haslin's theory of time mm-hmm. in a vehicle traveling nearly the speed of light the earth has aged nearly 700, 700 years, years since we left, since we left yeah. which would have been based on the timeline in the film or probably around the time everything got destroyed yep. uh, while we've aged hardly at all yep. maybe so this much is probably true the men who sent us on this journey are long since dead and gone mm-hmm. you who are reading me now are a different, different breed, breed. Hope, I hope, hope a better, better one. one. <laughs> I leave the 20th century with no regrets. But one more thing. If anybody's listening, that is. Nothing scientific. Yep. It's purely personal. But seen from out here, everything seems different. Time bends. Space is boundless. It squashes a man's ego. Mm-hmm. I feel lonely. That's about it. Tell me, though. This is the important part. Tell me, though. Does man, that marvel of the universe, that glorious paradox who sent me to the stars, still make war against his brother. Mm. Keep his neighbor's children starving. Mm. That's the beginning of the movie. Yep. And and it's like, they can't make war against each other anymore. Nope. Because they did the final solution, basically, Pretty much to the, war. Yeah. yeah. The, the Thanos. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, with the snap. Yeah. Like, That's oh, it. snap. Oh, snap. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah. Which, at, at the time, that was a big fear, the threat of nuclear war. Mm-hmm. Hell, yeah, my God. Look yeah. at Dr. Strangelove, bro. Oh, yeah. Like, that's oh, 64, my God. so, like, yeah, yeah that, that all mirrors all that. God, that yeah. would be so funny, yet so fucked at the same time. So in so in White Rabbit, when she says you just had some kind of mushroom, is it a mushroom cloud? It, mm, <laughs> I, you know? I know you, it's you not, You ate but, a shroom, and then you saw a shroom. Yeah, you, know, you go, what what the, God damn, man. Uh, this is a good way to die, though. Yeah, like yeah. Someone die like this. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, dude, that's that, such a good song. That that whole thing, yeah, that is a great song. Mm-hmm. That whole quote, though, like you almost have to say the whole thing to know, like his mindset mm-hmm. going into it is like he can't stand humanity anymore because of how they treat each other. Yep. That's and that's what I took away from the entire thing. That's why I just put you who are reading me now. You're a different breed. Yeah, and hopefully yeah. a better one. That's why I yeah. had that part of it, just because I felt like that summed it all up. In, yeah. in a nutshell. And what he says to Landon is like, I'm a searcher too. I just think that there's something better out there than humanity. Yes, yes. Because he, because Landon says you're a negative. Because he keeps like making fun of him yep. and laughing at him. But he's just a cynic because he's seen too much. Landon's like, almost like Lucius. Yeah. You know. Because Landon's technically only like 31 years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's an idealist yet. Mm-hmm. Like he's like, we. there's hope. And uh, Taylor's like. 
Fuck you, dude. I've seen there's no I've, hope. Because he's shit. probably like... Uh, World War II uh, that's what I was going to say. I was like, yeah. he had and, to be a World War II. And if not World War II, at least Korea. Yeah. So, and, and on the cusp there. So either way... We're no. Both. Yeah, right. probably he both. Was, was and all of that. Because he would have been like 18 probably when... Uh, when Pearl Harbor happened, if we're oh, going yeah. that Taylor is Heston's age, so yeah, he could have been both and been like, I've seen some really fucked up shit, mm-hmm. and this is terrible. While you were, you know, shitting your pants yep. before you were potty trained, probably in college, yeah, you know, I was out probably in school still. I was out saving us, yeah, your ass in school, yeah, you know, and so. and that's I think why he's so cynical. He, I think I texted you yesterday. He's like. Uncle Ethan and the Searchers. Mm-hmm. He's he's kind of like a racist, horrible person, but it's because of his experiences. Experiences, and and yeah. by the end of the journey, he learns a lot of yeah, hard life just like Uncle Ethan, just like Ethan. Yeah, so I'm like, you gotta love John Wayne. He's yeah. Comanche. Yeah, Comanche. <laughs> yeah, Comanche. Yeah, and and I think Heston kind of embodied because I know Heston is sort of like one of those over actors, mm-hmm. but I think he embodied that like modern at that time a modern john wayne western character he did like because i know john wayne had like modern films but i mean like you you know you know what i mean yeah no absolutely yeah absolutely just that whole persona there's this whole aura that whole vibe yeah so screw it so we can get into the questions because oh yeah i'm sorry yeah yeah, no we can get into the questions so mvp of the film mvp honestly i would have to say heston I had Heston and Schaffner. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah, the director yeah, I, and okay. Jerry Goldsmith. The yeah, music the, the, is perfect. The score is great too, especially during the chase scene. And the writers, when when you hear like the uh, the the ape noises uh-huh. in the music, yo, you're like, oh, yeah, like, oh shit, <laughs> yeah, and like yo, it does. The suspense there is nuts, yo. That yeah, keep you on edge. And, and that's the great thing about this film, like it is suspenseful and. And it's like the minimalist. Yeah. Because it's, it's not gratuitous in what you see. It's not, and it's not a ton of action. It's no. not a ton of killing or anything. But like when you that. see it, your heart's you're pounding. You're like, yo, you're like, oh shit. This shit's Here we serious. Go. Yep. Yeah. You're right. The writers, Rod Serling and Michael Wilson. Yeah. I'm like, those are MVPs yeah. the lead, the director, the score, the writers. Peak season. It's got to be Heston, right? I would think because after this is when he did like Omega Man yeah. and Soylent Green. Yeah, because he was in Ben Hur, right? He was in Ben Hur and the Ten Commandments before, yeah, this, before this, but like this, I think gave him a wider this audience. Was, this was definitely his yeah. coming out party. I feel like, yeah, even though he was like forty four or whatever mm-hmm. when he came out, it's like it's like I'm sure even like the the hippies were like, dude, Heston. They're like Heston. This guy knows, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy knows. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so oh, and maybe even Roddy McDowell, because even though he started out as a younger actor, Cornelius. Cornelius, okay. Like, you know, it kind of I think it helped him like keep his career going. Probably. It was just tough to throw monk any of the monkey characters in because you don't makeup. see him. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. So I'm not putting names to faces or anything like yeah. that. Where so I'm like, it's, this it's, is Heston. So it's Peter Vincent Vincent, the vampire killer. Was Cornelius. Wow. <laughs> From Fright Night. See, like, that's what, like, I would have, I had no idea who he, I was like, just a yeah. guy in a monkey suit. But that means that the makeup was that oh, good. Oh, is that though. good? That's what yeah. I was like, the makeup is incredible. Yeah. All right, so, best quotes we already did. The one big one, so we'll yeah. skip that. What else you got? Obviously, take your stinking paws off me, damn dirty. Of course. It's the... Most That's iconic. the iconic quote from the line. Yeah. And the one at the end. But I got yeah, I yeah. got a few before that one. Okay. You look chipper for a guy who's 2,032 <laughs> years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, anything that he says, especially to, like, Landon. Yeah. so he's like, really busting his He was his busting chops. his nuts. Yeah, yeah it's like, like, <laughs> like that one part where Landon's like, I'm ready to die. And he's like, oh, doesn't that just make you miss Yep. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. Like, god damn. How about Dr. Zayas? You're right. I've always known about man. From the evidence, I believe his wisdom must walk hand in hand with his idiocy. Mm-hmm. His that emotions must rule cool. his brain. He must be a warlike creature who gives battle to everything around him, even himself. Bro. I, as Dr. Zayas, man. Dude, I'm like, dude, he was fucking smart, man. That's yeah. not wrong. It's no, not wrong. No. That's, that's human nature. It is summed up in a couple sentences. And look, don't look for it, Taylor. You may not like what you find when he's looking for an answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And another Still one, Dr. Zayas. Yeah, another one from Zayas. Man has no understanding. They can learn a few simple tricks, nothing more. Yeah. I'm like, damn, because that's when he's really trying to convince them. Yeah, because he has people, to. He has to play it up. Yeah, because if, if someone like Taylor comes along, then he knows what's going to happen because mm-hmm. he's found the evidence. He's found the happened. evidence. 
He's found and, it. And and Cornelius reads uh, from the Sacred Scrolls, Beware the beast man, for he is the devil's pawn. Alone mm. among God's primates, he kills for sport or lust or greed. Lust or greed, yep. Mm. Yeah, he will murder his brother to possess, to possess his brother's land. Let him not breed in great numbers, for he will make a desert of his home and yours. Shun him. Drive him back into his jungle lair, for he is the harbinger of death. Now that explains why there's not many women. Mm-hmm. Because they're trying to keep the numbers low. Yes. Or else. Yes. They're like, you can't be having them breathe. Yeah. But Nova was too hot to kill. They're yeah. Like, they're like, Joe, <laughs> you want to kill this one? They're like, I don't know. We'll keep this one around for a little bit. So Nova or the one who's like Nova in the uh, Tim Burton one? What's her name? Estella Warren? I, her name isn't Nova in that, but it's. I don't fucking remember her name. Yeah. but that Like line, I said, I need to go through and watch the rest of them. Yeah. Because I'm like. I haven't seen the old one in one fucking so long. Like even even like the last one, like the most recent one. Yeah. Last time I saw that was when I saw it in theaters. Oh, wow. God, that's was, like seven years. Yeah, ago. I'm like that's a minute. Yeah. That's what I was like I gotta rewatch yeah. that one. So of course, take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. We discussed. Yeah. Um, I had you cut up his brain, you bloody baboon. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, when he, yeah. When, see, when he sees Landon with the scar after yeah. they lobotomize him, it's effed up, bro. Because he's like. Any of these dudes, your folks? And he's like, yeah, that's yeah, the right one. there. And, uh, he's, and he's like, yo, Lanny, he turns around. I was like, my face, I was like. <laughs> I was like. You clutched the pearls, course. didn't you? I did. I was, I was fucking, I was really into this film, bro. <laughs> I was fucking bobbing out. Um, now, doctor, I'd like to kiss you goodbye. Your favorite scene. All right, but you're so damned ugly. We'll talk about that then. <sighs> but, yes, we will. But that quote, because. I, I think there's a reason for it, and I will go into it. We'll talk about that thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a couple more before we get there. Okay. You can cut pieces out of me, but you do it out of fear. Remember that. Yes. And that's what he says to Zayas when he's essentially trying to cut the deal with him. Oh, yes. yes yeah, that's yeah. That's what he says to him, and I'm like, yeah. that's a real line. Because I'm like, listen, most things is we fear we don't understand. Here's this one quote. I'm He's talking to uh, Landon. I'm a seeker too, but my dreams aren't like yours. I can't help thinking that somewhere in the universe, there has to be something better than man. Has mm, to be. Has to be. Right? That's And that's sad. Yeah. And that's yeah. how you feel about your own kind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's really turned, he's literally turned his back on humanity. And then what he goes through makes him actually champion humanity. Again. Yes. Yes. Because he's like, yeah. man, I love being, I love being a human. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. You know, it's like, fuck, we fucked up, but you know what? I love being human. It's, it's almost like how oh, you can look at America, dude. As fucked up as this country can be and all the shit, the history. Bro, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Yeah. Like, I don't want to Like, dude, I love America. Like, this is home. This is where it's popping, bro. I don't know, man. How do you I, feel I, about I America? Time in Fran- America. Yes. I'm not trying to live in America. America. But I would spend some time. I would spend some time <laughs> in France. Uh, I would. I just starve to death. But um, I think... Uh, well, you know, yeah, that would be awesome to go to France and just kind of see, like, the Eiffel Tower. Dude, be sick. You know what I mean? Because just... that attacked the uh, Umbrella Academy one time in the comic books. Oh, so yeah. I gotta, I gotta watch that. <laughs> you gotta read them. Oh, no, nah, I read them. You have to read Here, them. Here's, here's a really good quote. It was, uh, it's care. Taylor talking to Nova. Uh-huh, okay. Uh-huh. And th- this is more about, like, his psyche and how he looked at society from 1972. Imagine me needing someone. Mm. 1972 is when they left in the movie. Yes. So even though it came out in 68. Mm. Back on Earth, I never did. Oh, there were women. Lots of women. Mm-hmm. Lots of love making, but no love. No love. You see, that was the kind of world we'd made. So I left because there was no one to hold me there. Yep. Yep. I thought that was a good quote, yeah, too. Cause and it, and it sucked because I was like, she don't know what he's saying, but he's spitting some real. Yeah, yeah. He's like really opening up mm-hmm. for probably the first time in his life. Yeah. 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 He's like, I'm talking to a person who... I only won't respond. Don't even fucking understand. Yeah, she's just like, like she's like, ooh, ooh. right? She's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's like, but I, I had another one. I thought this one was a good one, especially on the social commentary of the world, um, especially back then. You got to remember, all men look alike to most apes. Yeah, and I was just gonna say from Julia saying, you know the saying, human see, human do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing, right? 
<laughs> you would see human do. But yeah. I was like, yo. But, but yeah, most men look alike, yeah. right? And like, that was the ignorance of the time. Yeah. You know, to be like, oh, all black people look alike. Yeah, all Asian yeah. people look alike. Yeah. That's just showing your ignorance and how yes, you don't yes. take the time to just open your eyes and really see people for who they are. And I just thought that was a good quote. And I was like, yo, that's that's true. They're like, yo, you're just a, you're just a white dude. You know what I mean? Here's something interesting, too. That this exchange between Taylor, Zira, and Dr. Zayas. Taylor, you know, there's your Ministry of Science, honor bound to expand the frontiers of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Dr. Zira, Taylor, please. And Taylor, except that he's also chief defender of the faith. Yep. And Dr. Zayas, there is no contradiction between faith and faith science. Faith and science. True science. And I'm like. And Taylor, are you willing to put that statement to the test? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. Yeah, But it's like, yeah, like, but there was a time when, like, science and religion were hand in hand. Hand in hand. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Now it's like, oh, fuck yeah. no. Yeah. I was like, as soon yeah. as you were saying that, I was like, I was sitting there like, this so, is funny. I don't think the 60s was the time for that either. Yeah. No. <laughs> but, but you're right, though, that it's like, there's so many different uh, areas explored of our society and what we thought and what we thought we thought mm -hmm. and how everything was obviously wrong because no matter what we think, we end up destroying each other. Yep. Like any nothing matters in the end because we just destroy each other. Because if I'm right and you're right, but we both think the other one's wrong, all we're going to do is fight. Yep. Yep. Blue and red. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Redemer Crips and Rebloodicans. Here's the weird thing. I was thinking about this the other day. We always call the Republicans the grand old party, right? The GOP. Mm hmm. But they started out as the Democratic Republican Party, so they're both the GOP. Yeah, like it's so. Why is one considered the GOP when they're they actually both started with Thomas Jefferson, the most jungle fever having in? Yeah, he was like, ever. Uh, he's like, he's like, shoot, I'm a swirler. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, I'm swirling, bro. Yeah, he's like, and I ain't talking ice cream, bro. Yeah, I'm thinking the show The Jeffersons was about his ancestors. <laughs> Because they were moving on, up moving on up to the east side. So, uh, yeah. Another one. Beards, I don't go for fat. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, which we talked about when Lucius uh, and uh, Taylor are talking about having a beard. Yeah, because you're right. I didn't realize why he shaved. He didn't want to. Because actually, in the beginning, he's clean shaven. And then he goes into stasis, and that's when he grows the beard. Mm -hmm. He grew it fast. Well, it, it was technically. Uh, probably, a year yeah oh yeah because yeah, because it was like six months up to that point Damn, and then, that was a lot of time went and, by and then after that he's like after they get out he's like it's been 18 months total mm -hmm. which is 2007 years because of light years, light years traveling yeah oh and then you find out just going back to when they land because remember landon is like we weren't programmed to land in water yeah but when they left there probably wasn't water where they were supposed to land they probably landed exactly where they were yeah, supposed that, to. Yeah, it could, be, could have been some expansion. That's yeah, because 2007 time. years later. The, long, the, the shifting yeah, of Earth happens. Yeah. Yeah. And, and plus the uh, destruction. Yeah. So, so now there's water where you should have landed. How old is Earth? Four billion? Four and a half billion years old? Something like We got to count the rings on a tree sometimes. That's we'll figure it out. It's <laughs> insane that the Earth is that old. Yeah. Um, another one, you know, uh, that's the paradox uh, that's the paradox. The more ancient culture is the more advanced. Oh, yes. Yes. yes that's what yes. Lucius, or not Lucius. Fuck, I keep calling him Cornelius. Cornelius, says that yeah. to Zaius, you know, when he's showing him the evidence of the, the artifacts. He's like, bro, look at this crap. Um, Another one. Uh, I got two more. Okay. What will he find out there, doctor? His destiny. Of yeah. Of course, that's, we already know us. And then, of course, damn you all to hell. Yeah, you know when he when he fucking finds when he finds out the truth. Yeah, here's a crazy film. Here's that one that you it said earlier. If this is the best they've got around here in six months, we'll be running. We'll the be planet. running the planet. Yeah, yep, that's a good one too. Apparently, that wasn't the best they that had. Wasn't though. the best they had. No, <laughs> no, no. no. no Doctor Zayas was sort of. He was definitely the best they had. He was just old. Yeah, but I mean, Zayas was smart, man. He was smart, like. He's one of them, like, I hate you, but I understand you guys. Like, he's yeah. an asshole, but I get you. And, and you're not dumb, and you're not wrong on all this stuff. So, what's age the best? I think the social commentary. Absolutely. And and honestly, because there's no real, like, special effects, other than, like, the, 
in the beginning with the spaceship, like out the window, out the window, that, just, that just was, like the stars and stuff. Yeah. But other than that, like everything is really top notch. Top quality. notch. It's quality. I, Even their spacesuits. Yeah, I'm like yeah. they look pretty good. I, I yeah. had the look of the whole film. The apes, makeup and mask. Yeah. I have the message, the themes and symbolism. And I like the fact that, you know, in the 2001 version, they went out of their way for the actors to train to move like chimps mm-hmm. or baboons or mm-hmm. gorillas or whatever. I like the fact that they didn't in this because if they are evolved, they, they would not be more act human. like that. Yeah, yeah they would be more like human too, and be I upright. Because like, I was like, the humans should act more like apes. Yes. And they did. And I yes. thought that made sense. Yeah. So where I'm like, the apes shouldn't, the human like apes shouldn't be, ooh, ooh. no, they yes. should be walking around back straight, sophisticated. Yes. yes. So I'm like, it yes, makes they sense. have monkey feet Logically. and toes and hands, but I'm like, other than that, they're moving and operating like humans because we're the more civilized yes. of the two. We're supposed to be, at least. We're more intelligent. We can say that. I'm yeah. civilized. Actually, that's probably not true at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. why. So, what's age the worst? I know, you I know, know yours. You know what mine is. I, uh, say it, please. The kiss between Taylor and Zero. Yes, I was like when, when he was like, "Give Daddy some sugar." I yeah, was like, and, "And what did I say to you? Why did he do it?" You said, it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> "I was like, yeah, Jungle Fever." <laughs> 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 Literally. He did. He and, definitely had jungle fever. He wanted to hook up with a monkey, and that's not racial. <laughs> no, but if you think about it in like a racial kind of way, it's really the first time that was that the first biracial kiss on the screen. <laughs> it's not. No. It's not. No, it's, it's not. not. It's, it's, not, it's, no, it's, it's not, not. But go back for the, that. the first one was in a Stanley Kubrick this? film in '55. But but the dude was so light skinned, no one could tell that he was brown. Yeah. Cuber was but, like, he's white past but, it. But there was always, uh, I think it's the first time it was like a white guy with someone symbolizing a brown woman. Mm-hmm. Whereas white guys had kissed like Asian women mm-hmm. and whatever before. And Spanish. this came out in March of 68. And then in November of 68, Kirk is kissing a whore on Star Trek. Oh, wow. Which is the first time on TV you have a, a white dude kissing a brown woman. Mm-hmm. So, like, I honestly believe the reason they have that. In this film is as stupid as it is, and as stupid as it looks. And even though she's like, "You're still fucking ugly, yeah. you fugly bastard." Yeah, she was like, "You're hideous." And, and as dumb and as awkward as that kiss is, so awkward. I think it paved the way for like Kirk to kiss a horror, which sounds dumb, but that breaks barriers. It did because Star Trek was so huge. Yeah, and and it breaks down all these barriers. Then that it's not taboo. For it's me not, to be married to fruition, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, I'm fine. It's it's not the it's not the bestiality of it, yeah, or, no. any, or any of that. Yeah. It's just the awkwardness. Oh of it. yeah, it, yeah, it was so awkward. But like, I I think it was important because he's a white dude. I know it sounds dumb because I think Sidney Poitier kissed that woman and guess who's coming guess to dinner, dinner, right? Yeah, and, and that was like a year before sixty seven. Yeah, yeah it was like something and like that. and I think there were some before that, but the guys were always brown. Mm-hmm. So showing a white dude doing something sort of like that. Is what I think broke the barrier, as weird as it sounds, because it shouldn't have been. Yeah, because they say men are more racially loyal. And so for a white dude to yeah. step out publicly, yes. publicly, yeah. not because we know what they was doing behind those doors. <laughs> yeah, oh, pu- yeah, yeah. Publicly, monkey business. Step out. yes, they was <laughs> handling their monkey business. Yeah. Um, but they were doing publicly. That was, that was a big deal, yeah. publicly. So they're like, I'm Wait. a strong, powerful white man, and I'm going to show myself putting yeah. my precious white lips on this dirty yeah. black skin. Yeah. You know? And and the thing is, like, you have to do it in a sci-fi setting to legitimize it. You yeah. can't do it in, like, a regular setting. Yeah, because, yeah, and she's a monkey human lady. Yeah, so, yeah. But you know, but, but the, the apes kind of symbolize. Yeah, yeah, yeah the analog would be. Bit. Yeah. So the way you want to take it. So I, I get I get 100% yeah. what you're saying. But you're right. It is, it is awkward. It was just so it's awkward weird. and weird. But, but it's it's because you can tell. That's the time you can tell they're like rubber. What, the, the lips look yeah. so weird. Yeah, because she can't move them to form the kiss. And, and like what makes it more awkward is her fiance and his bitch are standing right there. Yeah, because you saw Cornelius' watch, reaction. Cornelius is like. He's like, what the? He's like, the fuck? He's like, I'm sick of this man. Get this motherfucker out of here. He's bro. like, I don't want to yeah. kiss this bitch. Right? Why, why like, are you right? kissing him? Which I don't know why he wouldn't. But yeah, I mean, like, well, because he's a monkey. She's not she, a hairy beast. Yeah. He's like, look how yeah. smooth she is. Yeah, Ugh. gross. 
He's like, no blush. And, and why does she have no hair when they shouldn't have any razors? Yeah, right. Just she should have been a hairy right. beast. She had a fucking... She should have been She had French. a Venus, bro. She yeah. Had a, <laughs> she was like, I'm your fire. She, yo, she What's was, your desire? Yo, for real. Yeah. A hairless bitch. Goddess on a mountaintop. Yeah. Burning like a silver flame. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, that Cornelius definitely made it super awkward. Yeah, he's which like, huh? He should have. Yeah. Because I'll be like, hold on, y'all motherfucker. You, a hug is fine. Although Cornelius Shoot. is probably like, now I get to kiss this motherfucker. Yeah, like, yeah. Where he pees. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I'm, I'm sorry sorry Roddy McDowell yep. <laughs> I apologize Chill. confirmed bachelor Roddy McDowell Confir- I apologize. confirmed bachelor I apologize <laughs> I apologize I like that confirmed bachelor I'm gonna start using that so most rewatchable scenes honestly the entire the whole thing, film is rewatchable really because even like like that chase scene when he's like evading and they're at a funeral. Oh my There's God. an ape funeral, and yes. he's trying to sneak by, and the little kid's like, Yeah, hey, you the guy. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, You little shit. I was ready to slap that kid. Because he was smooth and slick. Like, he yeah, was the, he was. He was time, it was like a GTA mission. He was timing yeah. it perfect. So he knew when to run by when the, yes. kid, when, the, when the NPCs turn around. Yeah. And I'm like, This little kid wouldn't have saw this motherfucker. But I'm like, Hey, what Dude, he's kids a, at church are bored as hell. Anything else, he would have noticed yeah. right away. He's the kid from Yojimbo and. Yeah, so I'm Oh my god, like get so annoying and get oh. this kid up out of my life, yo. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. So I had the opening scene when they lay in the water just because oh, yeah. it looks fire as hell. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. When the apes hunt down the humans. Oh my god, just when you see them like bushwhacking. Dude, the, yeah. Dude. Just, and and then and coming. the suspense, you're like, what and, is that? And I'm gonna tell you right now, Mel Gibson was definitely watching that when he made Apocalypto. Really? No fucking question. Yeah, definitely was. Like the scene where they hunt them dudes in Apocalypto, like it's it's very similar to that. He makes it more of a game. Yeah. But he definitely was watching Planet of the Apes. And you know, Mel Gibson, he's he's Mel Gibson, so he was probably like I'm about to invoke some suffering on a whole group of people. <laughs> he's, like, yeah, he's like, I got this. Uh, so, I love Mel Gibson. That's my dude. I, I love him. Yeah. I was like, he's got some of the best anti-Semitic jokes you've ever heard. Oh wow. Stop. We will not be we're discussing them like because wow. I love So he really Jewish nails people. them. We're, we're going we're gonna to move on. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was, that, that was a Passion of the Christ joke. <laughs> Yo, yes, that's a passion. Which he directed. It's a passionate joke. Yes, he, a pa- he, he, directed. he did direct it. He yes, did. There's yes. a funny South Park episode pairing in that, too. I'm oh, really? To send you. Yeah. Okay. Um, next one. The Court Case. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is just brilliant dialogue spit back and forth. Yeah, and the thing is, and I've joked about Char- Car- yeah, Charlton Heston's ass like before, yeah. but they, they literally strip him during that scene. They do. But he's still like calm, cool, and collected. Yeah, which, which is crazy. Which, Anyone else should be freaking out, right? But they give him like something new to wear, and they're like, "Ew, he still stinks. It still stinks." I'm like, "What yeah. the fuck was the point of taking his old shit off?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, give him some toilet paper, right? Man. I'm like, bro, that's probably what stinks, this man. Right? What? Yeah. Like, I'm like, he probably don't stink. Y'all just, you know, y'all just hate humans. It smells like ass. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> ass he is out. Washed his yeah, ass. Yeah, my ass is out. Yeah, you've been you hosing know. it down, but that doesn't clean. Yeah, it. he ain't even spread the hole. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you know. that's a different kind of. That's prison. a different kind of prison. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my. So the breakout scene. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, both of them. Yeah. The one where he breaks out on his own. Yeah, that's great because he like throws the key when yeah. he's running away. He's like. Eh, screw this. He's like, fuck it. He's like, because I ain't coming back. And the weird thing is, the the door stayed open, and, and Nova just stayed in the cage. She didn't know what to do. Well, she's not that smart. I know, but that, I mean, that proves that, though. Yeah, she was very... She's like, you can have your freedom, and you're still just, like, standing there. She's probably like, bro, I don't know what to do. It was like, yeah. a lot of, like, a lot of free slaves are, what the fuck do I do now? That's true. You know what I'm right. saying? They're like, yeah. uh... Like, so. Yeah, because if all you know is, in, in cat... Encampment or enslavement. Yeah. What? Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. No one teaches. No you. No one teaches. You. Yeah. It's yeah. like all right. And it's like, well, shit. You're free. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's like dude, we got to cover Manderley one day. Lars von Trier. Okay. That's That's pretty much what that film's about. Okay. But anyway, when they show the evidence of the past. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh yeah, because he finds the glasses. The glasses. The baby the, the, doll. The heart valve. Yep. And, yeah, uh, yeah, he's and, like, and the teeth, the, in false the teeth, teeth. Yeah, he's like the false teeth. He's like this motherfucker had heart issues later. Yeah, he like, couldn't see. And they're like, "How does this motherfucker know all this?" Well, because yeah. I'm one of them. I was yeah. around. He's like, "I'm a better specimen than this guy." But yeah, still, we're the same. Yeah, I might look 10, 15 years older than I yeah. am, but 
It's all good. <laughs> it's from filming in the desert so much. Yeah, he was mad tan, bro. Yeah. yeah. And then I have one more. The very, very end, of course. Oh, my God, yeah. You know, when he sees the statue, I think and, it wraps the film up beautifully. And you, and you see, like, the, the bent part of the of the torch, the torch first. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and the, as they're coming, and then it they show it, out. and you yeah. see, like, the, the spikes from the crown. And if you watch, when you watch, again, the 2001 version, the Oberon, the, the big uh, space station, whatever they're in, mm-hmm. the the crash site on that planet spikes out like the crown of Damn. the of the Yo, Statue I'll of Liberty. To, I want to go through and watch that one again. Timmy B. And plus, a, another one, Caesar's mom in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, what do they call her? I don't fucking remember. Bright eyes. Oh, I do. See, that's I'm like, now I gotta go but, watch but, those because remember the, now uh, I gotta get all the references because that's what like uh, James Franco said. Their their eyes, yeah. get uh, that green or whatever mm-hmm. in there. So he called her bright eyes because she was the first one. He did call her that. Wow. Yeah. That one's so good, yo, baby yeah. Caesar. If you watch all three of those films, you'll be able to see now how they reference this first one. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm uh, like, through man. all three of them. Because I'm like, bro, I'm like, I saw all three of these in theaters. And, like, yeah. I ain't seen the very first one probably since maybe 2014, bro. Oh, that's wow. What I'm it's and been, that's man. when Dawn of came out. Yeah, so, so I was like, I watched it right that. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, so it's been a minute. All right, best characters. Best characters, uh, obviously Taylor. Taylor says bright eyes. Wait, wait, wait. Back to nitpicks real quick. You were gonna have something about Dodge. Oh yeah. What the, what the fuck? Because because when they had him like stuffed in the yes. Museum. Okay. So all right. So in that museum, they're all supposed to be stuffed and be like you know figurines. They're all fucking That's moving. Scary. Yeah, they yeah, are. You can see him fucking yeah. moving and shaking. Yeah. I was like, but it's sixty eight. They, they, Kubrick wouldn't have let that happen. Kubrick wouldn't have, but this is Franklin J. Schaffer. <laughs> this is not Stanley Kubrick. And and who knows? It maybe they wanted it more realistic than having because they could have probably just put mannequins there That's and put what makeup on it to make it look real. Yeah, but I'm like, damn, y'all couldn't have edited it to make it look more still. Or have them in positions that they didn't have they to didn't hold. They didn't have to hold, yeah. yeah and be so like, ah, uh, like have their muscles. Some editing tricks could have been done here. Yeah, that's true. Like, I'm like, these motherfuckers are moving. Yeah. That pissed me off. Yeah. That was yes, that was my other nitpick. But that okay. was being ashy as fuck. Yeah, he was. But I'm Super like, dang, I'm like, they were like but his color's wrong. They were like, let's fix that. But if you think about it, would these apes have lotion? <laughs> Hell no. They, yeah. they, they got shampoo. Yeah, they they don't have like coconut oil no, or anything. They got none of that. Like, yeah, you get pink that oil new moisturizer. Yeah. <laughs> They might have pink yeah. oil moisturizer. Yeah, they you might. Know. They are hairy. They got right? the hair right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they might have the pink oil moisturizer. That's uh. how I know you know black people. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I have bright eyes, Taylor. Yeah. I had Zira. Yeah, Zira. I did. I had Lucius. Zayas. I have Zayas. Because he's kind of best and worst. Yeah, I have him in best and worst. Yeah, yeah. I had Lucius and I had Zayas. I'm in the middle with Cornelius. Yeah, because he's kind of like. He's an asshole for a while. Yeah, but he's he's you so, get it. But he's so meek though. He is very. He's not like, he's not like Zira. Zira no. it wears the pants yes, in that family. Does. I mean, they both wear pants, but you know what I mean. <laughs> like she's the one who's like, we have to. We do doing this. this? Yeah, she was like, yeah. bro, we helping this dude because he's like our career, our everything. She's like, I don't give a fuck, and he's like, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. He's like, I know which side my bread is buttered. Yeah, he sure do. He's like, man, yeah. he's like. And yes, I got I, that from Freedom 90. <laughs> he's like, if I ever want her to, you know, stroke my banana again, I better fucking. <laughs> I better act right. Uh, you know yeah. If I want her to pick the lice off my back. Yeah, right. Oh. Which, believe it or not, I think, I don't know if this would be a nitpick. There's no animals or insects in this film other than humans, humans and apes. Humans and apes, yeah. Nothing. They just all died no, nuclear. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, nu- the, the, the nuclear or whatever. It caused like the apes to evolve and everything else to, to die wipe out too except weak. for a few humans. Yeah, because yeah. I'm like, all the insects, it shouldn't be too weak to survive any of that. Yeah. But the apes, you know. But where are the cockroaches? They're supposed to survive They're supposed that They're supposed to survive shit. at all because they yeah. live in the hood and shit. And what about the Twinkies? They're supposed to survive too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's I true. Mean, Two thousand years old, we're still good. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> hmm, still fresh. I open it up. So, yep. So I had Where's bright eyes. Else? I love that movie. Yeah, bright eyes. Zero, Lucius, Zayas for best. For yeah. worst, 
I had Zayas in the council. Yes, yeah, yeah, because the council was like they were all the president heads. and that other doctor yeah. that he brings yeah, in. He later. was being a dick. Yeah, he's like, tell us this, this. How the fuck he's supposed to know that if he ain't from there? Yeah, because even he said face. he's like, I don't like, know I your don't laws. No, bro. What the fuck? Come yeah, on, bro. That's like me going to Japan and they're like, all right, Dom, tell us what's the law on this. I'm like, I ain't never fucking been here, dude. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I'm like, I can guess. I'm like, you're wrong. I'm okay, shit, I don't know. Yeah, so that's what I was like. He's a best damn worst because yeah. it's like. He's a genius. You understand him. Everything he says makes sense, but at the same time, execution. Yeah, because he, he's kind of the villain, but you can still see where he's coming from. Yes, he's so, not a. He's a villain in the sense of a film. If you had to label him that, but he yeah. truly isn't a villain. He's not out for destruction. He's yeah. not out for like. He's not out to do. His main goal is just to preserve his people. It's yeah. not to cause any kind of. Well, he is causing harm on the humans. Well, well the real villain is the humans. Yes, you find yes, out at the they end. they are, yes. I'm like, yeah. the, the villain... Are, it's not necessarily Taylor or Nova, no, but it's no, still the but humans. It's human, hu, uh, civil, human society. Yeah, civil, yeah. Civilization. And, and what humans have done. But you notice, and why I said it's really about, like, um, white male fragility is because the humans that are left are white. Yeah. And... The humans at that time that would have had access to nuclear weapons would have been, would have been Russia, Russia and the United and States. US white guys. Yeah. So all the other races, <laughs> I'll, I'll use that quote. Out. Yeah, they yeah. got wiped out because of insecure white guys yeah, who nuclear war. Uh, yeah. If you want to put it that way, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, because so, uh, obviously U.S. and Russia turn into a dick measuring contest. Yeah, because it's, you know, Africa's not nuking anybody. Hell and, no. and obviously that's a continent, but I mean, any nation in Africa. Hell no, it's too hot. You know? Can't think it's about nuking Asia, people when you... Fu- yeah, and it's before, like, North Korea had what it, whatever yeah. they say they have, and before Iran, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it's before anyone other than those two superpowers. It was superpowers. literally just the U.S. It was like, we gotta be Russia, we gotta be Russia, yeah. we gotta be Russia. Yeah, yeah. it's like the, the, the effect of the Cold War... Like the site, not only the psychological effect it had on like Taylor, mm-hmm. is it wiped out his entire planet that he wanted to get away from anyway. I mean, dude, it's like when you're watching Oppenheimer, that really shows you how much it was a race between Russia and U.S., dude. It's like you had a blast Russia, watching that movie. I sure did. I sure <laughs> had a blast. I fucking love. Oppenheimer was one of the funnest days in the last couple of years for sure. All right, recasting couch. Okay, let's go. So for my Taylor, yeah, I Chris Pratt. Chris, he is the he right just age. Kinda, now. He just kind of looked like he just looked like a thicker, more in shape, more handsome version of Heston to me. See, with, I, with his hair, that actually makes a lot of sense because we said before this, like Matthew McConaughey would probably be he really good. Been a good one too. Yeah, I was thinking like your your guy Josh Brolin. Brolin would be a good one too. He'd be great. You know, because I was trying to think of. An older actor who can be physical, but but I was thinking of it when I thought Heston was in his fifties. Yeah, and I found out he's in his forties. So like, Chris Pratt, shit, I was like Pratt. I'll yeah, Pratt, 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 Chris Evans, Evans could do it. Uh, Any of the Chris's, Pine, Evans, or Hemsworth. Pratt. Oh, Chris Pine would be incredible. Pine might be because he, he would be the be one the that would one. I think emote Heston like the best he would. and get away with it because he, he was built a the, great. He's built the most similar to him too, and he was a great uh, Captain Kirk. So he has the, the sci-fi chops in he that does. area. And the physical chops. We just had to give him the tennis shoes from uh, yeah. oh, from oh, I'm, I'm the Night. night. Yeah. yeah like, but yeah, because he has that new film coming out, The Pool Man or something. I do love Chris Pratt, or Pine. So. Yeah, believe it or not. I Chris, mean, honestly, any of, any of the Chris's yeah. from Pratt down to Hemsworth, you know, would be fine. Yeah. Roland would be fine. Um, who else did we just say? Other older guy besides Brolin. Um, no, we we just said all the Chris's and stuff. I don't think I don't know if we said any. I was thinking Rockwell could work too. Oh well, Sam Rockwell could do Pedro. anything. Pedro. Oh, Pedro Pascal would be amazing. Pedro would be good. Or even Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac or Pedro Pascal. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. kind of almost one's just taller. I'm like, it's really yeah. Much like, I'm trying to think if any like uh, good like British actors. Because I'm like... Right was, now, like, all the good like, Brits are old. But I was thinking, like... Think about, like, Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, yeah. You know, he would bring a different kind of intensity to the character. He would be good. BBC. Yeah. I but, actually like that a lot. But you know who would be really great and who I thought of first? Mm. Mark Wahlberg. 
because now he's the right age to play Taylor since it's been 23 years since he yeah, played Leo yeah, Dennison. Yeah, yeah, now he is now he is the right age. Yeah, he's the I right still, age. I'm still not casting him. Really? Why he's not? He's too at this point in his career, he's too animated. Okay. I want somebody who can scale it back a little bit because it's going to be the Marky Mark show. Uh, but like although yes, this was a definite vehicle for Heston, it didn't feel like the Heston show. Yeah, that's true. He didn't overpower the movie. That's I think true. Mark Wahlberg at this point in his career, he'd be doing Wahlbergisms. Yeah, and I'm like, oh yeah, because he's established himself too much. So you yeah, can't have like, you can't have the Rock, yeah, hell or, no. or, or like Jason Statham no. or somebody. Those those dudes are yeah. just two name brand. Yeah, or that's why I'm like, one of the Chris's would work, or Brolin. You know or, who would be incredible? Hmm. Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig would be good. He's a yeah. little older. Yeah, but he's he's only like early fifties. So, dude, Daniel Craig's like fifty-eight, almost sixty. Right? He can't be. He was like thirty-six when he started Bond. Cause, but his wife is like fifty-four. And I think he's older than her. But I think he's older than her. Well, he was thirty-six in Let's like two thousand and six. I thought when well, he was he's when he fifty-six. Was... Okay, that's kind of old, bro. Uh, it is he old. But to look kind of old. But look, he he looked old twenty years ago. He did, but he, he looking looks old much now. The same. Yeah. Oh, He's bro. just finally looking his age. Tell me this man ain't looking a little old to be playing that part. Well, remember him in like Cowboys? You know, British dudes out, out of nowhere just fucking age. Age. Yeah. Like, they'll be young as hell and then they hit 70 and it's like, oh, you're 105. Because see, I would I would like to think like someone like Henry Cavill. He ain't got the chops. I, that's what I was going to say. Like, like he doesn't even really have the look. He's almost too good looking too to good be looking. Taylor. He's too handsome. He's got that chiseled ass jaw. Yeah. And body. Nah. You know, Ben Affleck might do a good job. I, I would take Benny. Yeah, yeah. Because he's the right age now, he's too. He's the right age, and his acting has grown a lot. Yeah. I think he's grown a lot as an actor. To do Hugh it. Jackman. I thought about him. Hugh yeah. Jackman could definitely play it. Yeah. He's Some a, Someone, well, Hugh Jackman is just an amazing actor anyway. He is. I, someone, oh. I, I would like Matt Damon if he was taller. If you go uh, slightly younger for Taylor... I think Andrew Garfield would be oh. a good pick. Andrew Garfield can do anything. He can do anything. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying. He, yeah. he wins. Yeah, Andrew AG Garfield. AG would kill this, Because he's now bro. like late 30s. Yeah, he's like 38 or 9. Yeah, he so kill he, this. Yeah, he He would. actually, just put a beard on him, he'll look age appropriate. Yeah, because he, he is kind of young looking, but like still. He's AG's had a beard before. Man. He has. So. It does give him a little bit of edge. Yeah, yeah. AG's the man. Yeah, I'm ta- I'll take that. Okay. I'll take Andrew Garfield. Yeah. Actually. I think that's my top pick. Wait, just one more. Hold on. Uh, Morbius, Jared Leto. No, fuck him. What? I love Jared Leto, but Ed he, Norton. Ed Norton would be good. Yeah, Jared Leto would make it that Jared Leto show. Okay, you know he would. It would be Morbius. He'd be three. like, "Can I have my beautiful, luscious, long hair?" Oh yeah. <laughs> and he'd be like, "My beard." He's like, "I need my beard specialist on set with me." They're like, "But you're supposed to look shitty." You know me? No. What about like? Blade Runner 2049 era Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Gosling. He'd kill it. He would. This era Ryan Gosling. Yeah, would kill like, it too. Kill but like it but I'm thinking more the, the way the, the intensity way he, he, he played K. Yeah. Yeah. That stoic kind of. Yeah. Yeah, because he is quiet. As Charles Heston don't talk a lot. Yeah, but what half. he says is important. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ryan G would be good too. Yeah, actually. so Andrew Garfield Andrew and Ryan Gosling. Or, yeah, Ryan yeah. G and, and Andrew G. Yeah. Yeah, I like both of them. Yeah. Both of them would be good. So, all right. So, let's do a couple of these apes. Well, wait, what about Nova? Pick your hot girl. She doesn't talk. She doesn't do anything. Yeah, but. Just pick so, a hot girl. So, who would you pick? I mean, like? who's gonna take this role for like? What? What's your girl from uh, Bottoms? What's Rachel S is not attractive <laughs> enough to she's the not regular. She's not okay. attractive enough to the regular eye. Okay, to be in it. But you would be for like, me, I'd be like Nova. <laughs> like, I don't know why that girl is so fucking. Okay, fine. so Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda <laughs> now could work. No, <laughs> Jane. I mean, of course, Jane back in the day would have been her look. Oh yeah, perfect. she would have been perfect. Even sixty eight, she, she would have been speak. perfect. I need to hear that lovely voice. Yeah, but think about the costume, though. I am thinking about the costume, bro. Um, I, I could tell you, we could do, if we're going now, it's got to be somebody with a little height, because no I was thinking not short. Believe it or not, I was thinking of... Um, Don't say Anna Kendrick. No, I was going to say right. Tom Brady's ex. Giselle? Yeah. That's perfect. She doesn't have to speak. Yeah, that's yeah. Perfect. Yeah, she that's perfect. Yeah, that's... Actually, that's what, like that Any works. supermodel would Yeah, work. I'm like, just get a hot model, because she was yeah. tall, pretty. That's it. Yeah. yeah, I'll take Giselle. Yeah. I'll take Giselle Bungeon. 
Because when she opens her mouth is the problem. Yeah. Yeah, because like. Yeah, because you've seen Taxi, I've seen right? Taxi. Yeah. And I was like, man, when I first saw I was like, God. So hot. And then she started acting. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was just trash, bro. Yeah. I was like, yeah. She was like, yeah, it didn't work out. I'm like, yeah, it didn't. <laughs> All right, so let's let's get some of these apes in. I'm telling you, doc, let's do Dr. Zayas first. That's who I have first. Because I, I think He's you need... One. That's I think I was saying earlier, like an Anthony Hopkins. Gotta be someone at, really just the, at minimum sixty years old. Because all you really need is the voice. Like they don't even have to be there in the costume. Because right now they'd probably do CGI for yeah, them anyway. They would. So, so you like Hop, huh? Or I just want an American for whatever. Or reason. honestly, you could do like Andy Serkis because he's like the king he of is doing the king apes. Of apes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Andy Serkis would work. Yeah, because like this film is work perfect. Is basically like a reworking of Tarzan mm-hmm. anyway, and Taylor is Tarzan. Yep. Yeah, but it's funny because like, because you want Nova, someone Nova. If Nova's Jane, they switch brains. They did. They did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that was the point. Though. Yeah, because he even says that in the movie. Yeah, because yeah. I think like for like Zayas, you need someone whose voice has like. Honestly, you know who would be a great voice for Doctor Zayas? Like Morgan Freeman, his voice. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah he ain't got to be white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he could have the gravitas. Yeah. You need someone that. You know people are going to listen yeah, to. Yeah, Morgan or maybe even like Idris Elba if you want oh to Oh my younger. god, yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to get a black dude. You know what? He would actually be a great tailor. He would. If you want to go a black tailor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't matter what tailor looks like cuz we're doing it for now. For now, yeah. So he, he would be amazing cuz he's just a great actor. Yeah, he's he's incredible. Do anything. And in that case, Medea could be Dr. Zayas. Chill. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> it's like Dr. Zayas is like, "Hello." <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that, 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 that's the that, that's the courtroom Get scene. Fucking Tyler Perry to yeah. play. Hello. All right, I'll, <laughs> I like any of them for Zayas, honestly. Yeah, because like you said, it, could just, it would essentially just voice work. Yeah. So if you want to go British hop, if you want to go American, I do like Morgan. Yeah, yeah I, I think because like cause his voice would add that like gravitas. Because everyone it. would just be like, "What do you say?" What'd yeah, say? yeah. God, God is speaking. God is speaking. Yeah. All right, so Cornelius. Who do you like for his voice? Cornelius, I, I hate to say it, you kind of have to have like a milk toast. Yeah, yes. That's, I was like, somebody kind of, eh, kind of yeah. boring, kind of nerdy. Yeah. Like, who, what's I, that look like? Honestly, you know. You know who, I have somebody weird, and okay. it's not even an actor. All right, let's hear it. Quentin Tarantino. He He's got perfect. this weird, dorky, odd voice. His voice, voice would be perfect. would be perfect for him. Yeah, it I'm would like, be. Tino can voice this guy. Yeah. Because Tino's voice can get annoying, just like Cornelius can. Or the Leo Getz version of Joe Pesci. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> 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 obviously, it couldn't be the Goodfellas it version. Hell no. Yeah. Like, yo, I just want to hear Cornelius be like, okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. okay. Hey, now, listen. <laughs> When I went to the Forbidden Zone, I saw the ancient artifacts, okay? They fucked me on the travel papers. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Cornelius, he, he, he just have to be a loser type. Not a loser. Just a yeah, loser I know what you mean. Loser. Because Zira has to, like, be more uh, authoritative than Oh, him. yeah. Yeah. I like, I'm telling you, I like Quentin Tarantino for it. For I think that's a great idea. Reason. Yeah, because yeah. he's, like... Just watch him for Dust Till Dawn, listen to his voice. You're like, I could totally fucking see him playing Cornelius. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, or even Steve Buscemi. Buscemi would be good, too. Oh, yeah. Buscemi. Yeah, even now, his voice sounds the same. Yeah, Buscemi yeah. Buscemi would be good. Or, uh, you know, if he was still alive, I would like Robin Williams, too. Or um, the guy who plays Sheldon on Big Bang Theory. Oh, he would be. Oh, my Jim God. Parsons. Yeah, Is Jim he, Parsons. Thank I think, you. I think we got to go with him. Yeah, right? yeah. He's I think got, he would be perfect. Be it, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. He's got, he because wins. he's been playing like a smart guy. That's kind of his anyway. big. Yeah. yeah. Like, hate to typecast you, but hey, it's yeah. a paycheck. Yeah. So, um, That's true. <laughs> you know, he would be perfect. Zero. We, like you said, it's got to be somebody with some fire, strong. Yeah. I was, um, you know, I was thinking about my girl, Jessica. Um, or Kate Blanchett. I, I thought Kate Blanchett, yeah, believe it or not. Or, or she, Emily Blunt. But Kate Blanchett, it's her voice that could... She got uh, a strong, powerful voice. Yeah. Even Meryl Streep now could do yeah, it. Yeah, you're right, because I got, think of her in her Fantastic Mr. Carries. Fox. Yeah, she... As uh, when, when, Mrs. Fox. When you hear Meryl's voice, you shut up. Yeah. You listen. Meryl's voice takes you in, no matter what role it is. Yeah. So she could do it, but I do like... I like Chastain's fire for it, but I do like Kate Blanchett. Yeah, it's I her think voice is, she's a good voice actor too, and she's voiced monkeys before. And oh yeah, Pinocchio. yeah, you <laughs> yeah. And I think I remember the way she was like 
kind of overacting in Thor Ragnarok, I think that would work. It was perfect. Though. Yeah, 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 it was perfect. Yeah. Like, like that film, everybody was overacting and it was perfect because it was yeah. like an 80s action 80s film. action, yeah. Yeah. Like, Taika Waititi was like, more, faster, louder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was Lucas. And, and it was great. Yeah, I, I'll take, yeah, I'm cool with that. Maybe even your girl, Helen Mirren, bro. Oh, yeah, because um, she, would, she would add that air of integrity yeah, to it. Like, yeah. I don't know if she's too old, but... But her, vo- her it's voice, it's just the voice, yeah, really. Yeah, right, because... She does probably sound a little different than she did in her, like, 40s, 50s. Oh, I'm sure, but... but... I Because in my head, I'm thinking, like, 50-year-old Helen Mirren. But, yeah. I mean, she ain't much changed. No, no. No, she still looks great. Yeah. I'm like, she's great for an old lady. All right, so, one more. Lucius. Lucius. You need, like, somebody younger. Tom, Tom Holland. Holland. I was... Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Tom I mean, he would be perfect, be, right? He has to be. Yeah. I'm like, he's the, it's him. Because he has that young that energy. Young energy. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. I'm thinking of him in, like, Uncharted, even Spider Man, of course. Yeah. Like, yeah, it has to be Yeah. Because, be like, Chalamet. Chalamet. Maybe, but I think, Tom Holland, yeah, I think Tom right, Holland. Yeah, I think Tom Holland. Yeah, Tom Holland's got the dorkiness like, to, to yeah. cut it up good. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, I feel like we, we both knew that. Yeah. Man. But um, then would you have a Zendaya as Nova then? Would you be able to? If if we go Idris for for um Taylor, we yeah. go Zendaya for Nova. Not, yeah. that, not that she has to be. No, no, no. But I'm thinking biracial. No, no. But I'm thinking like because she's taller. Tall, she's taller than pretty, Tom. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean that robot costume. <laughs> Play that, by. <laughs> yes, that's, yeah. that's just hilarious. <laughs> I was like, damn Zendaya, and like I think she's pretty, but she ain't my type per se. You know, she uh, but. I mean, pretty girls are pretty girls, and they is gorgeous. <laughs> I was like, man, I was like, follows a robot. And then C3 is like, that's how I'd be, too, shit. And but I yeah. thought C3PO would be looking at, like, R2-D2 R2, like that. yeah. I saw yeah. like, is that a C3 be acting questionable? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, he, he yeah, is. Like, yeah. He was, was the like, first... C- yeah. yeah, I was like, he might have been LG, he might have been LGBT no, friendly. No yeah, I was like, he he was a male pleasure model. But I'm like, <laughs> ah. No, because no, ah. C three is he wants your yeah. hard drive and his software. He definitely does. Yes, yes, yes. he's like, I ain't got no hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> so I got no unanswerable questions. I actually think the film answered everything. It it honestly did because you can extrapolate from the ending yes what happened between yes that yeah. all my questions were the ending answered it pretty yeah, much so yeah. i was like you can use your imagination yeah because like where are they how's he gonna get back home yep well, you know, yeah, all that here shit. we are yeah here we are the only question is where do we go from here yeah like does taylor rebuild population with nova and do things the right way this time or does human nature kick in and ultimately he becomes his own downfall Unfortunately, you know, they did sequels to this. I wish they wouldn't because I like those those are unanswerable questions yes, right like there. We're sticking in the context yeah. of 1968. Yeah. We're walking out the theater in yeah. 1968. Yeah, because... I'm finally allowed to go in because they broke segregation. Yes, down in the yes, theaters. finally. So I got to see this. And we with got the to see white it together. Guy. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> incredible. We saw this together. So, you know, this strong movie on uh, uh, social commentary film. Yeah. We saw in an unsegregated theater, walking out, <laughs> this is the question I would have. Yeah, and I think that's a great question because you can hope for the best yeah. because of that. Yeah, and I'm like, that's what I'm like. If I would have saw, if I'm a black dude in 1968 and I watched Planet of the Apes, I'd be like, I have fucking hope. Yeah. I'd be like, I have fucking hope. I think that was I'm the like, point of it, though, Yeah, right? I was like, this film gives me hope. And even though the ending's kind of bleak and sad... It's still like it's almost like a phoenix. So yeah, it's like we you can, can only go up. We gotta rise. From yeah, this. we can rise and be better. Mm-hmm. We can be better like, than I we were if we learn from learn our mistakes. From their mistakes. And I'd be like, man, that, because those humans that are there can't learn from they mistakes because they don't know what the they mistakes don't know were. What mistakes but were, he does. They don't even have the education to learn about them. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, he does, and it's like. You know how to read and write, bro. You can start yeah. all this shit over. He has the power to make everything better. He does. And you just got to teach Nova how to talk and write and do everything. Yeah. How to be a person. And he can then have the humans and the apes coexist to make both societies better. Yep. Because it's, it's going to be better because there's things we can do that they can't and vice versa. Yeah. Combine forces is game over. Yeah, you know yeah. You what I'm saying? Like, sure. Yeah. And you'd be everyone would be unstoppable. Yeah. So I mean, we don't know how 
how long, I guess, like the radiation lasts. So if the land is inhabitable, we don't know anything. Cause he well, turned, the land's got to be good, right? I don't know. Well, not in the forbidden zone, maybe. Well, uh, from what Dodge said in the beginning, he's like, eh, you know, you can't really grow much here. But then they started, you know, they got to like they an oasis. To, yeah, so I'm like, yeah. clearly either there's, there's an area, an that's, area not. that's unaffected or an area that's recovering faster than another. Yeah. So it's yeah. like. There's hope. Yeah, because obvi- hope. <laughs> obviously someone nuked New York. Yeah. Or else the Statue of Liberty wouldn't have drifted over. Yeah, somebody nuked land. New York. Because like, in that case, they were probably somewhere in like Kansas. I don't know. Like somewhere in the middle of the country then. Uh, they were close to New York. They had to be. Yeah, he just close, went up the close coast. Enough. Yeah, I guess so. He was probably in New Jersey. Because it felt like they were hiking, though, for a fucking while. But I guess not. He was He was on the Jersey Shore, Yeah, he was man. on the Jersey sh- Yeah, I guess pumping. so. He was on the Jersey. Yeah, I guess he was in New Jersey. <laughs> or, yeah, close enough. Because they... Connecticut. No, nah, he had to be in Jersey. He had to be on the water. Yeah. So, unless, like we said, shit shifted. Yeah, that's true. Because we have no idea. Because we have no idea how far the statue oh, drifted. Oh either. yeah, yeah, you're right. That shit could have. They could have been in California, and that they, shit drifted over that or way. Florida. Or, yeah, yeah. Because it would have landed where Cape Canaveral should have yeah, been. Yeah, they they gotta be somewhere or Cape down Kennedy. there, right? Yes. They yes. got and, and the tropical fruits growing. Yeah, it's gotta be Florida. Yeah, it's gotta be. Yeah. Yeah. That makes more Florida. sense. And in and Florida. the Statue of Liberty, the just, sa- it, sh- it shifted down. Yeah. With, with the changing of. I mean, it was yeah, two thousand years. Yeah, at least. I'm like, shit. or at least seven Plates or eight hundred. Yeah, you know, what I mean, everything yeah, that happened. Yeah. So there's probably new natural disasters that didn't happen. We ain't even fucking know about. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a masterpiece film. Yeah. It's 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 fucking incredible. I was blown the fuck away. Really? I was knocked off my socks. Wow. I I knew I was gonna like it, but I didn't think I was gonna like it this much. I didn't. I didn't think it would hold its relevancy so well. I'm only shocked that you like it this much because I know how much you like the new ones. The new and ones the new are ones fire, are, but you got you but, know but I'm the a new purist. Ones, yeah, I know, but you gotta the, know your roots. But the new ones are like animal rights films. They are, but so yeah. is this one. This one is, but like we are the not animals. Not as overt, yeah, yeah, it's not as yeah. overt, but it's it's trying to put the humans in the place of the animals so yeah. you can see. This is how you fucking treat people. How would you and, like it? Yeah, and that's what Rise is. Like, Caesar is Taylor yeah, in Rise. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then it's like, bro, there's a few movies. Um, Like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's a fucking animal rights movie, whether you want to believe it or not. That's why they display the humans like stakes on hooks. Mm. And they treat you that way, like, to make you feel like, yo. Yeah, what do what we we're do doing to these right? animals? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yo. So it's like, I kind of, I looked at it in so many different angles. But, I mean... I'm all about the animal rights, but we got to get ourselves right, and then we can start doing everything else right. Yeah. So that's why I think I gravitated to the first one a little bit more, because I think the social commentary in it was a little bit more important. It yeah. still has more relevancy. Yeah. So, I mean, it's an A-plus for me. Oh, yeah, it's totally. It's A-plus for a me. Plus, I gave yeah. it a five stars on Letterboxd. Really? I gave it five stars. I had to. Yeah, it's you're right. Like Watching it today, it feels like it could have been made yesterday. It, bro. I didn't, not one thing in it made me think this shit's dated or old. Yeah. I I didn't feel, I was like, this could have been 68, 78, 88, 98, whatever. And that's great because timeless things, like listening to Nevermind by Nirvana. Oh God, that album could have came out two months ago. Yeah, exactly. It's timeless. And not all music is timeless. No, no, it's not. Not all films are timeless. No, like... Music especially. Yeah. You hear a song from the 80s, you know it's a song from the 80s. Oh, definitely. You hear that white you know, snake, look, you know it's popping. You know I love Wang Chung. Yeah, so but like, you know that's Yeah, if fuck, you hear bro. like To Live and Die in L.A., you know that's definitely bro, when you listen, mid-80s. When you, listen to, when you watch To Live and Die in L.A., you're just like, why well, freaking want them to do the score? <laughs> it it yeah. works for the film. It yeah. does work. But I'm like... At the time, they were one of the biggest they fans. they weren't getting score deals left and right. <laughs> yeah, but but they were like a huge band in they the were. mid-80s. Like, um... Because it was right around the time that Everybody Have Fun Tonight came uh, out. Was it Dance Hall Days? Oh, that Dance Hall Days. hard, bro. I That's love that song, hard, man. bro. That, it's just... Look, we were so in phase... In our dance hall. Yeah, hell yeah. Shit. We that's... were cool on craze. Hey. Look, when I, you, and everyone we knew could believe, do, and share in what was true. Which is like, those lyrics are pretty good for 80s lyrics. Oh, yeah. And that guy, the guy who, who uh, the singer in the band, his name is Jack Hughes. It's a stage name. Also, that sounds fake. It, it is. <laughs> it is. It's a play on 
the French term "j'accuse," which is to accuse, accuse someone. someone. Yeah, that's. But dude, the guy's amazing. Mm, interesting. The guy's incredible, Jack yeah. Hughes, man. And yeah, Wang Chung, just so many great songs, including that one from Breakfast Club, um, "Fire in the Twilight." Oh, what a great song. Hey. I know, like, dude, I, I gotta stop talking about Wang Chung because I don't want to listen to him. <laughs> hey, what about us? You know, I have a yeah. Wang Chung party. Yeah, you know, man. shit. Um, so anyway, what's your grade? Oh, it has to be an A plus, man. Because yeah, I, be. but believe it or not, like twenty some years ago, I would not have given it an A plus. Probably give it a B, B minus. I love the Tim Burton one back then. That's crazy. I know it's crazy, <laughs> but the Tim Burton film is a product of its time. It so, is. It definitely so, is. So, like low attention span, mm -hmm. like quick cuts, uh, just she action early phases of CGI yeah, and, and the changing and like, of special effects, and things are so dark mm -hmm. and dreary and stuff. So I'm like, wow, this is great. In 2001, it was like right before 9 11 because it came out in July 2001. Damn. So it's like it was like a totally different mindset. And I watched uh, this one after that, and I'm like, wow, this is garbage. <laughs> Why am I looking at Charlton Heston's ass, which I keep bringing up? But yeah. but he was really in good shape, he was in good shape. Uh, but it's like I watch this now, and I'm like, this is amazing. And the other mm -hmm. one's trash, yeah. I'm like, it's this film is a is a is a roots film for sure, but yeah. it's more than a just know your roots film. This is a film that I think anyone watching from any time period could get a lot of. I think a lot of young people will get a lot of, out of this movie since most of them want to be fake social activists anyway. Yeah, like, and that's oh, don't get me started. On that <laughs> that's garbage, what I'm like. You're so, right, fake social yeah, activists. Fake, yeah, I'm like, yeah. but I think they might hashtag get a lot activism. Out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, internet activists. Yeah, so. I think they get a lot out of it, actually. So, A plus is across the board. A, um, it has to you be. You should watch this, Cora. Yeah, you should. It's on Hulu. I told you. I watched it. Oh, did you? The oh, Hesson Do you not remember that? Why don't you that? chime in, Turner? Yeah, yeah. What Wait, What did you think no of more. it? Just real Give quick. Give it a grade. Yeah. Okay, it's been a while. Something like that. I want to know right now. Yeah. Grade. Mm, I would say probably an A. I don't know if I go an A plus. I just forget some shit. I'd have yeah, it. yeah. If you rewatch it, it, it might yeah, be an A plus. Like, you're gonna be like extra credit, hundred five percent. Yeah, yeah. Because like the way that it, you're right. The way that it goes about its social commentary, and unfortunately, it's still relevant today. Mm -hmm, very. Or fortunately, depending like, on how you look at it. Uh, it's a plus and a minus, man. It's a double edged sword. Yeah, yeah. Because, and you watch films through a different lens now, so you'll definitely look at it differently. You'll be yeah. looking at. A lot of the technical achievements that were pulled off in it too, man. Yeah, the look of the film is great. It's got a, it's got a vibe to it. It's got this sci-fi western vibe that just works for it. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking that too, especially when they're uh, in, the, the in the desert shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I kept thinking of like Sergio Leone mm -hmm. and uh, John Ford. I was yes, thinking of. yeah, I was thinking of yeah. Because the searchers kept coming mm -hmm. back to my head, and like that part where they're all in those like mountain canyon type dooney things. That, yeah, dude, it reminded me a lot of that. So yeah. All right, guys. Well, so next week, uh, we'll talk. Yeah, we guys, will still be a surprise. Yeah, I I have an idea, but it might. I, I don't know what you'll think. Well, I will discuss it. Okay. So. All right, guys. I'm Dom. I'm Jamie. That's the cutter room floor.